Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the uh, full gallery this morning. We have a number of presentations. I would ask that we uh, stand for a moment of silent reflection. Anyone has a conflict or pecuniary interest, I'd ask the Council to declare it at this time. Councillor Cook. Thank you, Warden. Uh, on 8D, the uh, delegation from the Community Living, uh, my wife is the controller for that company. So. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, uh, I would ask if there's any rising report from the in-camera <laughs> session. Thank you, Warden. There are two matters to uh, report on. The Council deliberated in camera session on two issues. One, a preliminary report from the Ombudsman of Ontario, and then secondly, on a matter concerning the security of municipal property. Thank you. Uh, we have a number of uh, delegations this morning, uh, and I would ask for a motion that we allow the uh, delegations to come within the rail. We have uh, Three delegations plus grant delegations. So moved by Councillor Buzowicz, seconded by Councillor Gillis. All in favor of that? That is carried. Thank you. Our first delegation is uh, in respect to uh, staff reports at the planning department. I would ask uh, Brad Zantag to uh, come forward. Good morning. I wish to thank Council and the Warden for allowing me to come forward this morning to make a brief presentation. To introduce myself, my name is Brad Zanting, President and Shareholder of BPS Ventures, Inc. and JN Ventures, Inc. All of the owners of these companies are Lambton County residents, and we are here raising our families here in Plimpton, Wyoming, Enniskillen, and Brooke Alvinston. Our family has extensive involvement in agriculture with, a, <clears throat> excuse me, with employment of approximately 35 employees with land ownership here in Plimpton, Wyoming, Enniskillen, Sarnia, Warwick, Lambton Shores, and Brook Alvinston. <clears throat> our family purchases land for crop income, manure management, and to be used to grow our assets no different than any other farmer. We have specifically sought out and purchased land within the urban settlement boundary of the County of Lambton starting in January of 2010. Our family has paid premium prices for these lands that have reflected the location and status of being within the urban settlement area. We have worked on development starting in May of 2010. The original request of planning staff was how to get 20 lots on the frontage of the property known as 3707, 3719, and 3771 Queen Street. With the beginning of a long process, the Hussey Ontario Board Municipal the Ontario the Hussey Ontario Municipal Board decision was released in regards to those lands in August of 2011, clarifying that these lands were set aside from prime agriculture land by PPS definition and that these lands were set for development. The A2 designation in the local official plan was determined to by order to be a placeholder for this development designation. No new barns could be built in this area. I've been here before in front of County Council in the fall of 2016 requesting that County Council defer any changes to the urban settlement area in the new county official plan. That plan was passed in September of 2017 without excluding the urban settlement area. This allowed for the absolutely clear down designation of lands within the urban settlement area of Plimpton, Wyoming, 
including several properties owned by BPS Ventures, Inc. and JN Ventures, Inc. This is a bit of the history, but as with many stories, there's more to the story. The official plan amendment applications that are before you in your AM committee meetings, motion 13 and 14, are applicable to additional concerns. OPA 41, 42, and 43 to the Plimpton, Wyoming official plan were all official plan applications that were deemed complete prior to the passing of the county official plan in September of 2017. Dates are very relevant. OPA 41 was deemed complete April 4th, 2017 by Plimpton, Wyoming. OPA 42 was also deemed complete April 4th of 2017. OPA 43 was deemed complete not until June 6th of 2017, well before the passing of the county official plan. Many studies and investments of dollars were invested to get these OPAs deemed complete. These applications are not required by law to have, the regard, to have regard for the newly adopted but not approved county official plan. If there was a new application today, the application must have regard for the adopted but not approved county official plan. And this isn't just Brad saying this. This is the law of the province of Ontario. It is also unfortunate, in my opinion, that as county staff were working through these applications on behalf of Plimpton, Wyoming, that there was never conversation at county council level that there will be conflict somewhere between the plans of the county plan, the county plan draft and these applications. These applications were never even present, these applications were not even presented at the draft official plan committee meetings before or after being deemed complete. This is very unfortunate in my opinion. I mention this to ensure you that this is not a new or recent process, but these applications have been in the works for some time. These applications were applied for in order to resolve the criteria of the county planning department that it had used in its justification for its down designations of these lands. The rationale used by planning staff was that if you have 82 two lands in the local official plans that you're going to be agriculture in the new county plan going forward. Our applications fix this as this is simply not what we bought when we acquired these lands. As an additional, no as an additional note, this is simply not an appropriate way to down designate lands and destroy land valuation of property owners that want to maintain development rights. There's lots of work needed for comprehensive review, work that has simply not been done to date. In contrast to this work being completed, many other applications have been approved uncontested. Why should these applications be treated any different? Planning reports have been provided that almost every municipality in the county has over 20 year land supply designation but they only suggest down designation in Plimpton, Wyoming. A proper down designation exercise would have all municipalities lose, lose designation to match the 20 years. This work has simply not been done. Others will say this isn't a down designation what's happened, and if that's the case, why change the designation at all? Why not leave it urban settlement as it has been for many decades? Why change it? I also note that this council on many times previously, just like the Council of Plimpton, Wyoming, has approved many, many applications confirming the development rights of A2 land in the local plan within the urban settlement boundary in the county plan, which allows development. Why now should there be any different approach to these applications? I simply don't understand. In my previous correspondence back in 2016, I forwarded to all of the councillors each of the five Ontario Municipal Board decisions which have all ruled in BPS and JN's favor. Why after five times would we expect a different answer on the same question? The hearings have actually been so, become so common now that for the last OPA hearing, OPA 39 in Plimpton, Wyoming, we had the same adjudicator as we had in 2011 on the first hearing. I'm not sure that an adjudicator will hear the same evidence from the same sides, but randomly come up with a new answer. Nothing has changed. The planning areas, the urban settlement, the A2 designation in the local plan are identical issues then 
and now. No difference. None at all. And if I'm wrong on this, which I'll stand corrected if I am, but if I'm wrong on this, I'd like somebody to show me where. But unfortunately, the facts speak for themselves. My request is that for Plimpton, Wyoming, OPA 42, motion 14 on your uh, AM minutes, that county council support Plimpton, Wyoming and approve this official plan amendment. The motion presented is absolutely an error, as we know from history that this application is absolutely 100% consistent with provincial policy statement. We've got 501B hearings that show that. Um, and by default, it's also consistent with the county official plan. I don't think the OMB is going to make that error five times. It doesn't make any sense. And make a different decision on time six. It does not seem logical to me to fight a member municipality when this same type of application has been approved many times before by this county council and by the Ontario Municipal Board. The property is located between a large golf course and million dollar houses not a logical place to preserve land for agriculture use. My request in regards to OPA 41 and 43, motion 13, is again, I don't see any value in the county being involved in the Ontario Municipal Board hearing process between our company and the town of Plimpton, Wyoming. It is, du it is duplication and added cost borne by the taxpayers and our company Yet having another set of lawyers and planning, planners at the table makes little sense. It would make most sense to have Plimpton, Wyoming solve its own appeals. I would urge County Council to reject this motion and not seek party status in these appeals. To close, if my request cannot be granted by Council and the motions are approved as in the minutes and we proceed to actual OMB hearings, I would request that Council stay closely involved and staff be, in, be directed to actively engage in settlement conversations. Through proper conversations and dialogue, a great solution can be found where concerns of planning staff can be addressed and that property valuation is still maintained. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, presentation. Question, Councillor Bruzewicz. Thank you, Mr. Zanding, for your clear, concise presentation. I couldn't have done any better, so thank you. Question I have for you, apart from the issues you came here to address, are your uh, associate businesses involved in any other actions, like legal actions, etc.? Well, I, I know OMB, you know, it's one thing. Are you involved with some other third parties to deal with these issues? No, the question I have for you, I, I perfectly understand what you were saying here and, uh, and, and your comments about OMB, but apart from OMB involvement and the, uh, and the uh, county involvement, are there any issues you have with other parties, like legal actions, etc.? Are you clear of them? I'm just, you know what I'm trying to ask? That a valid question. I'm not, I'm not sure I understand. totally understand your question, but... I'm not sure that I don't believe there's any other legal actions that I'm aware of. And okay, no. The things would be difficult for me to support, but I'm all support of your request here. Okay. Any other comments, Councillor Bradley? Mr. Zanning, you probably appreciate your presentation, but you remember at the committee hearings that there wasn't a willingness for the county to get involved in. Um, a separate meeting which you were requesting in the letter from your planners mainly because the OMB has a mediation process to it and the other point I want to make is that um, um, the county has a specific interest which is different than Plimpton Wyoming and different than your interests and it would be highly inappropriate for the county not to be there and secondly it would be highly inappropriate for the county councillors to be part of that discussion when we mandate an intervention that intervention should be handled the legal staff, the planning staff, and not have the direct involvement. Of county. I've never heard of that happening in the past, and I don't think it's appropriate at this time. And yes, uh, there may have been success in the past, but there are very fundamental, substantial issues here. And that's why across this floor and across county by county, uh, the concern about the, the amount of development 
and the impacts on other communities. So I appreciate your viewpoint. You're very articulate in the way you espouse it. You're very uh, diligent in keeping in contact with us. But the county has a specific is issue and interest it must protect for our ratepayers as county councillors. Okay. Councillor McGugan. Yeah, Mr. Warden, members of county council, uh, thank you for that excellent presentation on how you uh, uh, presented it. I had this question for new business. I will ask it now, and it may not be related to your situation, but I'm going to ask uh, whoever wants to take it. Where are we on the official plan with the Ontario government? It's now six or seven months since they received it. Have we had any contact with them on any parts of that official plan? I'm not sure that it's related to your situation, but it's out there. Mr. Cole? Through you, Mr. Warden, uh, Councillor McGugan, uh, we actually recently had a delegation at the uh, Roma conference uh, where we had an opportunity to sit down with, uh, with the ministry office responsible for reviewing uh, the, or, or uh, processing the, going through the one window process uh, for our official plan review. We have started to hear some feedback from their office even since that meeting. They have indicated that they will be able to meet their timeline and we should be hearing um, uh, in the near future uh, uh, the, their decision and, and if there's any recommendations. And it, and it does look like there will be some, some uh, changes that they'll propose, but they're still working those out to what extent. Uh, I, I and it's, sorry, I'm sorry, I just don't have a specific date at my fingertip, but it's, it's not months away. It's within the next month or so. Councillor Roosevelt. Mr. Zantik, if I understood it correctly, uh, made a reference to inconsistency of the previous plans. Could staff elaborate that from their perspective? I'm, I'm sorry, could I just uh, have that question repeated? You were referring to inconsistencies of other plans between themselves? And I would, I would like to have staff respond to that. Is that clear? I, I think what I was referring to in my comments is that if the new county plan ever gets approved, then my lands will be agriculture in the county plan and by default in the local plan, whereas my applications are preserving my rights that they were urban settlement in the old plan, and I want them to st maintain that status of urban settlement in the current plan. So when there's two processes side by side, you know, it shouldn't, should, I, I don't think it should have been two silos and two totally separate when they're happening with the same people at the same time. There should have been some dialogue and made sure that was discussed. And to answer, if I can comment on, on Mr. McGoog or Councillor McGugan's comment on the plans, you bring up a very good point. The new county plan is not yet approved. These applications cannot be judged on the new county official plan because we don't know what it is. We act, it's not approved today. It's not the plan that's in place today. The old plan that's been in place since 1998 says these lands are yellow on the map. They're urban settlement. We can pull out all the maps. We've been through five OMB hearings to show that. We're yellow on the map. We're yellow. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. We're urban settlement in the 98 plan. That's the plan that these applications need to be judged on today. And in the event we go to OMB, that is the plan that these applications will be judged on, not the new county plan if and when it's going to be approved. And I think that's very, very important distinction difference. My applications were deemed complete by Plimpton, Wyoming staff prior to the September 13th, I believe, passing of the county official plan. And dates in the province of Ontario, when we go through Ontario Municipal Board process, are very, very critical to that. So I think that's really important that we understand that. Okay. Uh, thank you. Just, Do you have a follow-up? Just a follow-up, yes. And that's exactly what I was describing as an inconsistency between what has been in the past, what may be in the future. And that's what I would like to have the staff to comment on. Okay. Mr. Cole? Through you, Mr. Warden. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this conversation and I'm going to look 
to our manager of planning who's in the gallery today to see if there's anything he'd like to follow up after, after what I uh, have to say. Um, so uh, uh, Mr. Zanting's correct. We are looking at the old plan. The, the, his his um, submissions happened under the old plan. As you know, um, we sat down uh, with our uh, County of Lambton official plan uh, review committee and we reviewed this uh, this issue extensively and uh, there were there were many things that were discussed through the through that process uh, to address inconsistencies that we that we saw in what uh, had previously been intended and the decisions that were being made at the OMB so uh, we will have to function under uh, under the old OP how the new OP will relate into it, um, it, 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 uh, will be, it will be reconciled through that process, but because of the timing of his uh, application, uh, that's what uh, the OMB will be primary, primarily looking at. Uh, is there anything else that uh, our planning staff would like to add to that? Okay, thanks. Okay. Thank you. We've had uh, Councillor Napper, I'll let you, uh, and then I think we... Uh, yeah, thank you. I wasn't going to comment, but you mentioned that committee that we sit on. Wasn't that the recommendation coming out of that committee, coming to the county floor, that we accept that? Uh, and, and then uh, I add, the day that we voted on it, there was a shuffle of maps here, and they were so small that uh, there was a map put up to the board that I missed that we hadn't discussed at that committee since November, and it got shoved in there, and uh, I screwed up, but uh, that's okay, too. That's my fault. But that was a recommendation coming out of that committee. We discussed it for days down there, and it come up back to this committee that we would approve it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, uh, yes, the, re the recommendations that came out of that committee were incorporated in the plan that was adopted uh, here on the floor of Lampton County Council. So... Uh, uh, and, and I think that that plan provided a clear um, discrepancy from from uh, the plan previously that that uh, what you've heard uh, uh, Mr. Zanting talk to today. So that's not the plan under that's going to be under consideration when we go to the OMB. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your presentation. The council will deal with the motions uh, through the uh, committees. Uh, when they come come up later on. Uh, our next delegation, uh, Karen Richards, uh, Mary Jean O'Donnell, and Joy Sim Robbins, uh, delegation for the um, TSL. So welcome. Good morning. You just have to push the button, it'll turn on. Sorry, keep clicking. Okay, good. Good morning, uh, Warden and Council. Um, uh, Joy, Sim Robbins, and I are very pleased to be here. Unfortunately, Karen Richards, our chair, sends her regrets. Uh, so you just have the two of us this morning, plus uh, Vicki Prell in the, <laughs> in the audience. Um, so we are uh, pleased to review the changes um, that have occurred, share our successes, and to ask for your support for additional funding to help, set, to help offset an increase in rent. So let's start with the overview of 2017. With our general manager on approved leave, we were fortunate to hire Joyce M. Robbins as our interim GM. Joy has the leadership skills and business acumen that TSL needs. As an organization, we also had to make some other staff changes this year. We did so with the support from county HR and legal departments and the TSL board executive. And we're very thankful to both uh, the county HR and legal departments for their assistance in that process. And with the staff changes, staff morale has improved significantly. So on to the happier part of the story, successes. Uh, and there are a lot of them, so I apologize. These slides are quite thick. Um, but starting with uh, the number of visitors, it, 
from 2016, that improved from uh, 82,000 to 85,500 last year, which is fantastic. We were able to get federal and provincial grants to hire four summer students. The retail store surpassed its sales goal, and our social media continues to improve. Uh, for example, with Instagram, we had an 81% improvement, second only to uh, the London tourism region, so that's pretty impressive. And over 400 visitors uh, took a photo with Marvin the Moose in front of the 150 mural. Blue Water International Grand Fondo was named the uh, second, was the second international <laughs> Grand Fondo. Um, had over 750 participants and was named top 10 in Canada. And for you, you those of you that don't know, Grand Fondo simply means big bike ride. <laughs> and it is big. The smallest, the smallest one is uh, 50, 50 kilometers. Um, TSL was very helpful in helping to host the Ontario Chamber of Commerce annual general meeting. We had over 250 uh, delegates from municipalities right across Ontario. Um, that was an extremely successful event. Uh, TSL also partnered with SLEP and attended the EDCO Meet the Investor Dragons and met with potential tourism investors. And also partnered with uh, SWIFT and ArtWalk. And moving on, um, we launched a new um, campaign called Ontario's Blue Coast, which has been extremely well received. We partnered with the Southwestern Ontario Tourism Corporation, so that's SWATSI, um, on a video series. Over 13,000 delegate packages were handed out. We hosted nine travel bloggers and also participated in six tourism shows, five conferences, and also we hosted five workshops ourselves. Uh, and that's to help our tourism partners with Im improvement on engagement. Experiential is the big uh, buzzword these days. So uh, looking at 2018 um, and also a bit of 2019, um, there will be a new video featuring uh, Twin Pines and Refined Fool. Tourism Week is going to uh, showcase Lambton County. Uh, the third Grand Fondo will have a thousand cyclists. The National Kinsman Convention is coming, and um, Tall Ships is coming, but not till 2019. But this is a huge coup, huge partnership with the city of Sarnia. We're thrilled, and um, that's going to be big. So we're very proud of that. Um, the Water's Edge Soccer Tournament, this is going to represent about uh, 2,500 people coming in July. Um, and again, on the experiential side, Cruise the Coast Motorcycle Tour, the Wine and, uh, wine and Beer Trail launch, uh, which also goes up into Huron County, um, which is quite exciting. And uh, again, product development workshops throughout Lambton County f to do customer excellence, uh, creating quality experiences for the day tripper and those who are staying longer. So now on to the fun stuff. <laughs> I always like to joke around about numbers and being fun. I'm the treasurer, so good times. Um, so what you have before you here is uh, our 2017 actual uh, budget as close. This is to November 30th, but uh, we annualize the data so you can see it. Um, and then 2018 is the forecast. So there are a couple of things here. Um, we're showing visitor services with that $8,000 line of revenue. We're really hoping that that increases, um, but we're not sure. And also the federal provincial grants we have in there at 16.5, which is what we obtained in 2017. But we don't know that we will get those in 2018. We just finished those, those applications, right? So they've just gone in. Um, so this is sort of a best guess um, based on obviously the very generous um, amount of funding that we receive from the county. So all of that in is about 823000 If you check the yellow lines on the expenses side, you see our rent has dramatically increased, as have the utilities. Um, up until 2018, we weren't paying any utilities at all. And now we're faced with, again, this is an estimated number, but we're looking at about $13,000 a year in utility costs, which takes us to a shortfall of you know, give or take $35,000. Um, so that, um, oh, and I just wanted to also mention um, in terms of retail uh, or revenue sources. So we have the retail store that made 8,000 last year. We also rent our boardroom 
total revenue is actually just about $1,500, so pretty minimal. But we also uh, lend that room out to uh, the rail community, Communities in Bloom, Ontario Senior Games, Grand Fondo. And so there's an in-kind contribution there um, of about $4,000 as well, which we don't show on any line items, but I, I think is not an insig insignificant number. So uh, on to the last uh, screen is basically our ask, which is to cover the increased rent and utilities, we are asking for an increase to base of uh, $35,000. Questions? Okay, thank you for that. Questions, uh, Mayor Bradley, Councillor Bradley. That uh, that wouldn't be the utility cost wouldn't be part of that uh, that overall number. Uh, a bigger question: uh, a number of years ago, tried to get a levy on hotel rooms in um, in the urban area. And at that time, it was voluntary, and the, the the major hotel said yes to it, which is just a small tax. Anyone who's been to any large city, there is a levy on there that tourism pays for tourism. Tourism is the only sector that is funded by the county. We don't fund agriculture. We don't fund any other sector. Do you have a position on implementing, and I know London's looking at this, uh, a levy, whether it be 2 or $3 on each room and each visit, that would then pay for tourism instead of the taxpayers? I'm going to let Joey answer that. Okay. Uh, through through uh, Warden Weber to you, uh, Mayor Bradley. Um, absolutely. Uh, I think there's some interest in implementing that. Uh, it depends on, um, uh, I guess we're, we can see our accommodation sector is growing throughout the area. Uh, so I, I think that will revenue generate. Again, that's something that municipalities have to do. It's not something we can implement now. That's been taken, um, that volunteer program has been taken away and given to, um, to municipalities to, to handle. So we would be very supportive of that. Okay. I see another hand. Councilor Roosevelt. Thank you, Mr. Warden, for decades now I've been questioning the funding that you have. I see on your proposals here that less than 10% would come from the, uh, from the business partners. And I tell you, I, I with, and I compared in the past, I still compare, the funding model that Frankenmuth, extremely successful uh, operator of tourism, is using and what we have here. I was a direct participant in some, some of the uh, events that they organized. In 1996, I was on one of the international teams that was uh, uh, sc sculpting in Frankenmuth. I remember I, I show up. The team was given 750 American dollars appearance fee. We were uh, hotel accommodated at Bavarian Inn, we were fed. And the question I asked the organizers, is that coming from property taxes? None of it. The beneficiaries uh, who, and, and, and the actual said, why should they? Because basically the, the benefit they got, the, at that time I think it was about 250000 they were spending on this event alone. It was very successful, crowds unbelievable, probably more than the success you get here. And I've been, I've, I've been mentioning that Frank and Mood model for years and years, and then they said, you know, we don't need property taxes. People who benefit will fund it fully, and they do. And they just as successful, maybe more successful than we are here. And I keep on waiting, waiting, and I don't see that happening here. Why is it? Warren Weber, um, that model that works in Frankenmuth uh, is not replicated anywhere in Ontario. So that would be, uh, I think what you're talking about is a membership-based situation where um, you know, the, the uh, destination marketing organization would charge back to the, the tourism businesses um, to be part of their um, programs. That is not the model that is used across Ontario, not just here, but everywhere. So follow up. Why wouldn't we be the first one? Why is it not replicated in Ontario when it works so well on the other side of the border? Well, I, uh, 
For the warden, um, Councillor Bershewitz, I, one thing you also have to bear in mind, because actually I happen to be that person, is that we have a membership-based organization which is called the Chamber of Commerce. So uh, every, ideally, every business in uh, Lambton County pays a membership fee into the Chamber of Commerce, which is actually where Tourism Sarnia, excuse me, I have got a bit of a cold, which is where Tourism Sarnia Lambton uh, originated. So it would be, I think, quite challenging. Like I said, being, being a member of the board of the Chamber, um, it's challenging enough to get people to be, pay that membership fee, let alone trying to ask them to pay an additional fee, just as a thought. Councillor McDougall. Thank you, Warden Weber, and thank you, ladies, for your presentation this morning. I know that three years ago, a uh, committee was formed to um, uh, develop some programming and to develop some uh, um, stretched-out opportunities for business partners to um, make um, and participate in um, some economic um, expansion opportunities, and that committee... Uh, started and I don't know if it ever finished its work. Did it come to any conclusions or did it sort of fall by the wayside? I'm aware of the program. There was no conclusions. It was just, it was started but it wasn't finished. Okay. And my second question, oh, sorry. My second question, if I could, um, when I look at the rent line and the utilities line there, and I can appreciate that there is a considerable increase to both, um, I recall reading in your presentation um, that uh, for the visitor services and the sale of some goods that are flowing through the shop that Tourism Sarnia Lambton has at the visitor center, that there is a certain commission that has to go back to Blue Water um, Bridge Authority. Did you try to negotiate that flow of money out of it in the face of the fact that they are now charging you more money for utilities um, and rent moving forward? I, again, thank you very much to the county, uh, oh, sorry, through the warden, uh, to the uh, county legal department. Um, yes, we have looked at this, and uh, unfortunately, uh, this lease agreement was written uh, before our time. By our, I mean Joy and my time, um, and so it, we've we've reviewed it carefully. I actually have a background in real estate, um, and it's pretty lock solid, and that's coming from uh, our own legal department as well. Sorry. Um, I guess my final um, concern with respect to the hard work being done at this new location, because I know there was many, many goals when that determination was made that there'd be greater exposure, greater value to the industry here, greater opportunity to support local artisans and move some of their goods along to the traveling public. It seemed like a really wonderful idea. And moving forward, I think... Um, it, it, I don't know when you can get back into a new agreement with that um, bridge authority, but I think that needs to be central to that discussion. The other thing is in renting out the room. It's great to do this gift in kind to all these wonderful organizations, but at the end of the day, your costs still are your costs and somebody's paying. So I guess moving forward, you're going to have to look at that too. Thanks. Councillor Case. Yes, uh, Mr. Warden, through you to our guests, thank you very much for your presentation, first off. Uh, my question goes back in time a little bit. One of, the, one of the, whether it's good or bad, one of the realities of sitting here as long as I have, I've gone through this presentation many times. And I guess my question is, at one time, TSL came to us and said, you know what, give us less money. We're going to find a way to raise more funds on our own within the industry. And I'm sure some of my colleagues can remember that when they came forward. And we looked at that as rather fresh and rather encouraging to us that you were looking at other ways of trying to find revenue. So, again, I think you're doing a very good job. I want to say that right off the bat. But at the same time, I just wonder, what have you looked at internally as far as ways to raise extra revenue? Because it's easy to come back to us and say we need an extra $35,000. But I guess my question back to you is, what have you done as an organization, as a management team and a board, to try to come up with those dollars on their own? So that's my question, Mr. Warden. Okay. 
Through you, Councillor Weaver. Um, just some of the things that we have looked at, again, is renting out space within our, within our building, uh, not just a boardroom, but we do have some um, display areas, uh, trying to get some partnership dollars. Uh, when I came on board um, back in 2017, um, the retail space was not well developed. We spent quite a bit of effort uh, developing that to a point where uh, we're very proud of that and would invite each and every one of you to come in there and take a look at what we've done. We feel we'll reap the benefit of that this year. Um, tourism has a real issue across the province in revenue generation. Everybody wants to revenue generate. The problem that we're facing locally is that a lot of our tourism businesses are facing the new increased costs with Bill 148. And we are hearing a lot, a lot of complaints about that. Um, some of them are saying, you know, they're not going to be able to operate. They're going to have to cut their hours. And, and so I think right now um, we're very hopeful that... Um, now there'll be an opportunity to charge um, a bed tax that's been taken out of our hands. It will no longer be a volunteer program. So we're really hopeful that that's a way to revenue generate. Um, and we continue to look for other opportunities. I think back when, uh, if I recall, I wasn't in this position, but I do remember when discussions were, uh, were in hand across the province about this voluntary bed tax. And that may well have been what the idea was uh, back in the day, um, Councillor uh, Case. But uh, I, other than that, I think um, I think we're we're trying our best to revenue generate and to um, and to move our organization forward and make it less uh, dependent on taxpayers. Follow up. Yeah, Follow up is I do appreciate your comments, but at the same time, I would really appreciate if you could come back to us with a bit of a plan, a bit of a business plan on how maybe you can get the whole way there or part way there. Again, I know you're looking at the organization. You've explained that you are looking at other ways of obviously producing more revenue, and I do appreciate that. But at the same time, I would really appreciate if you could come back to us with a plan of action on how you're going to try to get there. So thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. Councillor Gillis. I thank you, Warden Weaver, members of County Council. I, I agree with uh, Councillor Case with regard to putting together a business plan. It's a good idea. But I also want to uh, thank you very much for the hard work that you've done over this past year, introducing new programs to us, particularly the Grand Fondo. That's a huge success. The Blue Coast um, initiative that you have going on, it's amazing what the information that's coming through and the response that we're getting, the number of tourism, tourists that are coming into our area that are looking at our area with fresh eyes and not just concentrating on a few, but on the many. Uh, I think that uh, that in itself speaks volumes to the dedication of what you've been trying to do on behalf of the county. And I don't want that to get lost in the discussion. So thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Han. I'm a member of TSL, board member, and uh, I just wanted to highlight that the board does, I mean, the TSL does work to try and generate ideas for revenue and demonstrated by the retail store and the success they've had there. I mean, the situation that they're facing right now is all about this contract that was signed five years ago that uh, put the organization into this precarious position. There was no utilities charged until January of this year in that contract. And then the significant rent increase that came in in January. So under normal circumstances, it would have been, we would have been in a far better situation financially, uh, but for this contract. So they have, I mean, the, the, the team has been working to generate income and appreciate that this is a significant increase. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, through the warden. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hand. Um, in your package, there are links uh, to the videos, and they're really worth watching. 
Um, they're pretty great. And that's all been um, uh, done, um, again, as other promotion pieces. So just as a demonstration, um, uh, Councillor Case, with regard to uh, the level of promotion and, and sort of stepping up our game, I, I think it's, uh, especially given all the staff changes that we had in 2017, I, I, think, uh, I think staff have done an amazing job, really. Okay. Thank you for that. If there's no further questions, thank you for your presentation. Uh, this will get... Uh, uh, referred to budget probably we have one more presentation from mr. Stephen Thompson uh, Sarnia Lampton economic partnership and I would invite Stephen to come forward now Push the button on the microphone and you're good to go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, warden, members of council, this is, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to, to be here before you all to provide an update on Sarnia Lambton Economic Partnership and our activities. Uh, this, this is my, my first time before council as a council as a whole. I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting uh, meeting a large number of, of, uh, of folks, uh, both through our, our board of directors as well as the one-on-one the -on -one meetings that I've been doing out in the, in the area municipalities. But thank you very much for the opportunity to be here to provide an update and, and let you know some of the activities and, and where we're hoping to go. Uh, first off, some, some highlights. Uh, 2017 was an incredibly busy year for us. Uh, we had a number of successes, um, and all the successes that are here on the screen are really as a result of partnerships. Uh, working with area municipalities, working with the sarnia Lambton Industrial Alliance, uh, working with uh, the city and other municipalities to advance uh, strategic initiatives. And uh, finally on this slide is the, the economic development strategy that we're currently working on. Uh, the economic development strategy was initiated prior to, prior to my arrival. Strategy work began in, in May and June. I arrived in September. And we're currently, currently wrapping up the, the specific actions that will come out of the strategy. Um, in the meantime, we're, we're carrying through with the, with the 2015 to 2018 action plan that is currently in place. Uh, but looking forward to some of the new directions that are coming out of the, the um, strategy that... Uh, Hopefully, I'll be able to uh, present some highlights on in, in uh, the next couple months. Um, a number of, of activities, as I mentioned, we've, we've got the, the upcoming Innovation Bridge Partnership launch, which will be coming up in just about a month. We're working very closely with the college and the research park on that. Uh, new leadership, that's, that's me. I came on board in September, and uh, through, that, uh, uh, through that onboarding process, I made the commitment to... Uh, to work very closely with each and every one of the area municipalities. So I've reached out to every area municipality, have, have done one-on-one -on -one meetings in, in most of the municipalities, and have been, been very actively listening to what I'm hearing from the, from the municipalities. And uh, what I've been hearing has been mixed, but I think there are a lot of, of good learnings, and that, that, some of that is on the, on the next slide. Also did a, a fairly thorough look at, at things in terms of our internal operations, also looking at best practices from right across the province and, and beyond, and uh, also listening to our partners, to the stakeholders, such as the research park, such as the college, such as the Chamber of, of Commerce, and listening to how we can partner. Uh, economic development needs to be a team sport. We can't be doing it um, all ourselves, nor, nor should we be. So we're trying to figure out the best approaches and how we can leverage each, each other's resources. And uh, most recently, um, heard, uh, heard fabulous news from, uh, from the federal government, uh, a grant application that I wrote uh, a few months ago pertaining to investment attraction was successful, which means approximately $20,000 in federal government money is coming our way this calendar year to be able to support some of, some of our initiatives. And finally, as I mentioned, new approaches, new partnerships, and, and working very hard on, on wrapping up our strategy so that we can begin implementing it. So what have I been hearing from the municipalities and from our, from our stakeholders? Um, 
what I've been hearing surprised me a little bit. Um, been hearing from uh, from folks everywhere I go that, uh, that that they've heard good things about Sarnia Lambton Economic Partnership, but they don't really know what it is we do. They don't really know how we can engage and how we can work together. They don't really know who to call. Yes, there's a general email address. Yes, there's a phone number on our website. What does that mean? How is follow-up going to happen? And ultimately, the biggest question is, if something comes our way, um, if something is referred to us from an area municipality, how do we work jointly on that? Whether that's working with an existing business or working with a prospective business coming to, uh, coming to the Sarnia-Lampton area or looking at coming to the Sarnia-Lampton area. Um, so it was a bit of a head scratcher. I was like, how did we get to this? How did we get to this crossroads? And I even, I even look at our office and we've got, we've got a couple, couple offices that, that have desks in them, have computers in them, used to have employees in them. Um, over, the, over the past couple of years, we, we, had, uh, we had a few retirements and those positions uh, simply have not been filled. Okay, sounds great. We should, we should look at whether it makes sense to fill those positions. Maybe it does because we used to have, we used to have individuals on our team assigned out to each municipality. So we had essentially four team members that were assigned to three municipalities to have those regular dialogues to ensure that collaboration can happen when, uh, when retirements happened, uh, positions weren't filled, and the communication barriers started to crop up because we weren't, we weren't out there. Uh, where did the money go? Well, we're continuing to, to pay for uh, benefits that go to retirees, extended health care, which continues through until, until age 65. We've, we've had significant increases to our rent. We've had significant increases to the costs around our, our small business enterprise center because the province isn't, isn't contributing as much as it used to for those activities. We've also had increasing IT costs. Employment costs continue to go up uh, beyond uh, the inflationary increases that we've been getting from the, the county. And ultimately, we've, we've, we've had the communication challenges and barriers with the, with the area municipalities because we haven't been resourced to be out there on the street and also another major concern is, is uh, with, with, it was just a couple months before I came on board, a decision was made not to, not to pursue some provincial government funding. And that funding actually was, was funding to the tune of $350,000 over two years. We didn't have the resources to go after it. Um, again, that was a couple months before I came on board. But it, it's, a, it's a program that was essentially offered to every part of Ontario including this part of Ontario. All the other parts of Ontario stepped up and engaged in that program. We didn't because of the, the staffing situation that we currently have. Uh, my goal today, other than to introduce myself and to give you an overview of our activities, is to outline a plan to restore uh, the historical staffing levels, not to, not to increase staffing beyond where we were previously, but to hopefully outline a plan on why we need to get staffing levels back to where they used to be within our organization. If we're able to restore that staffing level, what does it mean? First and foremost, greater municipal engagement. Also supporting area businesses. So looking at, at uh, reintroducing a one-on-one -on -one corporate calling program with an additional 50 to 75 businesses that we, we hope to go out and, and meet one-on-one -on -one with the businesses, with the area municipalities. Um, also working more closely on business attraction. When we're not out there in the area municipalities, we don't know what we don't know in terms of the opportunities. So the more we can work together, leverage each other's strengths and assets, uh, the, the more successful we can be jointly. Also re-establishing a focus on resident attraction and trying to link that up with actual job needs and job opportunities that at one point had been a dedicated position within our organization um, it, uh, because of, of uh, vacant positions, a whole bunch of other things got placed on that individual's, uh, individual's plate on his desk and uh, is now less than the majority of, uh, of his time. So trying to, trying to detangle and work on a, on a plan to be able to put the adequate focus on, on the activities that we need to be focused on. And finally, developing an investment team. We've got a great board of directors that that brings a, a, a number of the key players to the table. It doesn't necessarily provide the same opportunity that having four people around a table, perhaps over lunch, perhaps less formally, 
talking about ways to collaborate could, could potentially bring. So I'm, I'm looking at, at different ways that we can really leverage each other's strengths and assets and be more effective together. And just anticipated outcomes, uh, greater collaboration. First and foremost, greater collaboration. Can't underline that enough. Um, additional support to existing businesses. Um, rule, of, rule of thumb is that 80% that of job growth can come from existing businesses and looking at, at a way to work with our area municipalities to support existing businesses for business retention, job creation, and also around innovation. Um, staffing resources um, around strategic business opportunities and being able to implement some of the actions that come out of our, our strategic plan. Uh, we, we made the commitment to, to work on a new strategic plan and um, I'm definitely committed to doing everything I can to make sure it isn't simply a document that goes on the shelf. It needs to be a document that, that guides where we go and provides uh, uh, the rationale for, for greater, more cohesive economic development activities within, within Sarnia Lambton. Um, ultimate goal of, of, uh, of, of attracting people to the area and creating jobs in the area. Although I don't, have a, I don't have the nuts and bolts around exactly what's going to be in our, our strategic plan. We're, we're probably a, a couple months away from that. We do have five key uh, pillars within our, our strategic plan, if you will. And uh, what I'm proposing uh, addresses the majority of those around population growth, around investment attraction and business growth, and around uh, collaborative economic development program. Uh, Final slide, um, we've had a number of, of very uh, detailed and, and thorough and, and fulsome discussions both with the, uh, um, both with the, the board and our, our resource utilization committee, also with the leadership team here at the, at the county with the CIO, the director of, of corporate, uh, corporate services, director of finance. Um, and we've looked, at, we've looked at budget benchmarking. I actually spent perhaps more time than I should have on, on looking at, at budget benchmarking, but I wanted to be sure I had done my, done my homework. We looked at, at the per capita spend on economic development right across the province at, at uh, the municipal level, at municipalities that are, are roughly the same size as the county of Lambton. And what we found is that we're, we're definitely on the, on the lower end of, of how much is spent on a per capita basis for economic development. Uh, so we, we, we looked at, at that, we looked at, at uh, various different scenarios of how we could, could better deliver economic development here in, in Sarnia Lambton and ultimately came to the, the decision that, that um, uh, first and foremost it was necessary to ensure we had the, the the people and, and the right people on the ground to be able to support uh, the economic development projects that everyone is expecting. Um, so a, a ask of, of $200,000 helps us to restore funding for these two existing positions and another $100,000 enables those people to do things that are in our strategic plan to be able to advance things. Uh, so implementing key components of the strategic plan and also innovation um, establishing the robust and formalized business retention and expansion corporate calling program, and very importantly, restoring the quarterly meetings with area municipalities and a working group so that we can collaborate with other economic development stakeholders. So, thank you for the opportunity to present that and, and for uh, a bit of leeway with the time. Thank you. Questions? Councillor Bruzewitz. Yes, I look at this $200,000 to refill two existing positions. You, you say they were approved and so on. Canada has quite a history of people who became dollar-a-year men. And I do know that, oh, absolutely, men and women or persons, that's, that's absolutely correct. And I am absolutely certain that this community could offer services of similar woman or men, or, or in, whatever the third option is. So have you looked at that possibility, and, uh, and why not? Th those with the people with tremendous minds, expert, specialized expertise that may be compatible with skill set that you need, and have you explored that possibility at all, and wouldn't cost as much money? Uh, uh, wording through you. I'm, I'm sorry. I think I missed part of part of the question. There was there was some other other. Uh... 
uh, stuff going on. Um, uh, sorry, can, can, you, can you restate the, the question? I can restate the question. There is people willing to serve the community to fu and fulfill all those requirements who would be willing to do that for a dollar a year. Have you explored as that as financial attractive possibility? In fact, even improving the, the skill set that you acquire uh, outside of the, uh, you know, of this high-priced help. Uh, Warden, for you, thank you, thank you for restating the question. I simply couldn't hear you the first time, but uh, um, I understand now. Um, I, yes, we're, we're, we're definitely open to, to exploring a whole range of, of different options. We do have a volunteer board of, board of directors that, that gives of, of their time to provide guidance and, and rolls up their sleeves to help out with activities. Uh, we're also currently in discussions with the provincial government to, uh, to um, hopefully bring a couple individuals into our team on a project basis to, uh, to help to help us out with some of the, the strategic activities that, that we're hoping to deliver. Uh, so we're, we're, we're exploring every avenue possible to be able to engage and to do things as efficiently and effectively as, as possible. And i um, happy to look at, at all potential solutions to be able to uh, uh, partner on programs moving forward. Councillor Gillis. Uh, thank you, Warden Weaver, members of County Council. I just want to put a little bit of context into what uh, Councillor Brushevich was trying to explain to everyone. My grandfather was a dollar-a-year man, and the concept came during wartime, during the Second World War, when industrialists from across the country came together uh, in Ottawa to create a common goal on the war effort. So they had expertise in various things uh, that were for munitions building primarily. So the concept is that you bring people together who have expertise in specific things. Uh, their companies pay for them to do that, sorry, and um, then they get paid technically a dollar a year. But it's, it's uh, an old concept that has worked in times of war, and it's something that when you look at what we have here in the, in the area, um, which we, the people, the, the caliber of retirees that we have attracted, the caliber of retirees that we have, they have a lot of expertise in various industries. So if uh, using that as uh, Councillor Brashev's example and using what happened during the Second World War um, when they had what was called the dollar a year man, it's a very interesting concept to put together and certainly something worth exploring because it certainly helped uh, Canada during time of war and maybe it's something that we can look at. Councillor Bean. Thank you, Warden, members of County Council, and thank you, Mr. Thompson, for that presentation. Um, I'm a little confused, though. We have people retiring, so can uh, those positions not be filled with that $200,000? And the other question I have is, um, why are we paying benefits when they're retired? Okay. Warden, for you, just looking for the, the slide here, which I must have passed by several times. Uh, yes, Warden, through, uh, through you to Councillor Veen. Um, th there are a couple circumstances. Um, so uh, first and foremost, uh, under, under county policy, long-term employees, I believe it's folks that have, have been with uh, the county or its agencies for more than 25 years have, uh, have extended health care uh, provided to them until age 65. So there is still an ongoing cost that comes, uh, uh, comes out of the, uh, the department or, or in our case agency budget. Um, so we have had those, those additional costs. We have had additional costs around, around rent increase. We have had the additional costs around the Small Business Enterprise Centre, additional IT costs that go well beyond the, uh, the inflationary increase that the county has, has provided over the, the prior four years of our, of our, our contract. Um, I, I haven't found any record of, of, uh, of my predecessor coming uh, before you all on an annual basis to provide an update on that. So I've, I've come into a scenario where, where I'm here both introducing myself as well as introducing what I've, what I've found from a review of, of, um, 
of, of how, how my predecessor was, was uh, uh, juggling things internally uh, to keep the organization afloat, but there was a, a cost in doing that, which was a, um, uh, which was a couple of positions that have, have been uh, uh, not filled because of, of the budget limitation. Follow-up, Councillor Bean? Yes, thank you. So the people that retired, so their wages was used for something else, so now we're, that's, we're, now we're playing catch-up again? Is that what I understand? Warden, through you, yes, 100%, that's correct. Any other questions? Refer, to the, Bradley? Budget. Refer oh. to the budget. Sorry, Councillor Boosie, I missed. I, ju I just want to make a motion to refer the request to the budget. Okay. I think the motion we to receive uh, Delegation A and uh, move B and C to the budget process. Councillor Boosie, seconder for that. Councillor Bradley, and you had a question, Councillor Bradley? Well, I want to put some context here. The, um, in the past, there have been people in the community, and actually industry has dedicated people that started uh, the Economic Renewal Council to, uh, to help us. But that took a long time, a lot of effort. Brian Morris, you may recall, was dedicated by his company at the time. This is an immediate ask to move forward, and I have a lot of sympathy for Mr. Thompson today because he's really um, being asked a lot of questions that you don't have the history on and you've only been here a short period of time. If you want this plan to work and if you want us to move forward at economic partnership, you're going to have to, to look at uh, giving the resources to do it right now. The research park and economic partnership have drawn on, on other people in the community. It's limited. There's usually a reason why people have retired, and it's to move on in their lives. And what we need to do is if we want to support uh, Mr. Thompson, who's new in the job, and the new plan, then we need to put the resources and we need to do it now. And uh, that, to me, is the key on this presentation. And well, those other options can be explored, but this council needs to support this budget on March the, uh, March the 7th. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I call the question on the motion to uh, receive the first item A and refer B and C to the budget process. All in favor of that? That's carried. Thank you. And thank you, Stephen. So we have uh, four more delegations. Uh, we'll carry on with those unless someone requires a break, and we'll try to go through uh, these grant delegations. And I would call uh, uh, Neil McLean uh, from the Middlesex uh, Hospital Alliance and the delegation to come forward, please. Whenever you're ready. Uh, good morning, uh, Warden Bill and County Councillors. My name is Ken Williams. I'm a managing partner with uh, MPW Accountants, and I'm also a board member of the Strathroy Middlesex General Hospital Foundation, and also a past chair and a nine year member of the board of the hospital itself. With me, I have Janet Grantham, who is the chair of the Strathroy Middlesex General Hospital Foundation. She also serves as chief executive officer of Main Street Credit Union. The board chair, Neil McLean, is with us as well, behind, sitting behind me. We also have Sue McLean, who's the chief executive officer of the foundation, and Todd Stepanik, the CEO and president of the hospital. Um, as a former chief administrative officer of the town of Bozanquit, albeit during the amalgamation times, it was uh, one of the things I noticed right away was how important health care is to our residents. In effect, it's the most important thing because without health care, everything else falls off the table. Uh, we're here today to speak to you about essential equipment. 
and, uh, and to ask for your support for that piece of equipment. And I pass over to uh, Janet for some. Uh, good morning. So if I was sitting in your chairs, I would be saying, why? Strathroy Middlesex General Hospital. Why should we be funding them? And I think if you look at the map that's on the slide, you can see that access to Strathroy, uh, to, to the Strathroy Hospital, is um, is a big is a big piece of why. It's it's about transportation. It's about the fact that a smaller uh, community hospital can offer a personalized service and a quality of care that's very different than some of the larger hospitals simply because of size. It's about the fact that if, if I was in, in an emergency situation, and by the way, that is the most commonly used uh, service for people from Lambton County, I would want somewhere that I could get to easily, that I, when I walked in the door, that um, it was, I was less of a number and more of a person, and also where when I parked, I didn't have to walk a block to, uh, to get to the, uh, to the hospital. So I think that aside from the fact that we have a, extremely good record around quality of care. We've done exceptionally well on uh, accreditations, in fact, achieving the highest standard that, uh, that you can for the past two um, audits that we had. There's a number of sort of more personal pieces that I think become very important when you're talking about Strathroy Middlesex General Hospital. Low infection rate, good recovery, things like that are important, but to me it's also about the personal piece that comes with a smaller community hospital. So that's how many cases, 13,879 cases, that actually, um, from Lambton County, that actually came through our hospital. Um, interestingly enough, we've seen a number of increases, uh, again, from this region, uh, particularly stress at about 20%, stress testing, uh, heart-type things. Um, diagnostic services, which is what we'll be asking for funding for, has seen an increase of just over 12%. Um, surgical daycare, ambulatory care, things like that. I think it's safe to say that we are the hospital of choice for a number of the Lambton municipalities. Warwick is, I would say, close to 100% of um, people who live in Warwick are, are coming to, uh, to our hospital. Lambton Shores is close to 70%, and uh, Brook, Brook Allison is over 50%. And those are just three, and the rest of the numbers are in the information that we gave you. I think it's important, the other piece is, um, there's some new services at SMGH which I think are important. Breast assessment, um, which as a woman is really important. Also an obstetrician, uh, OBGYN uh, just came in 2017, so again, very important. We have 3D laparoscopy, which is cutting edge and um, not common across uh, Ontario, so we're very proud of that, a new service. And finally, we've expanded our orthopedics. And I'll pass it back to you, Ken. Thank you. In addition, and the accountant in me shows up, it's the economic engine that the hospital provides to the county. Uh, we have, uh, maybe we can advance that slide. We have a budget of about $40 million, 400 staff, of which almost 100 reside in Lambton County, uh, wages of about $5.6 million to Lambton County residents. We also purchase services and goods, uh, millions of dollars annually, and quite a lot of that comes from the county residents and the county businesses. So we are an economic engine for the, for the county, but most importantly is, is health care. And when we look at what we're asking for, we're asking the county to fund replacement of a diagnostic imaging suite. We have three at the hospital. We see about 50,000 cases a year. So each of those, every 10 to 12 minutes, is running a patient through. They're all over 10 years old. And in technology terms, that's a dinosaur. We do our best, and we have excellent people who do their best uh, with the equipment we have. But in order to excel at service and continue to excel, to maintain and attract the top physicians and staff, we have to have the top equipment. We have to replace equipment when it reaches end of life. These have reached end of life. This new unit offers higher accuracy, quicker throughput, lower exposure to radiation or negatives to staff and uh, patients, and it's less expensive to operate. 
And when you're pushing through in each of those uh, pieces of equipment uh, five or six people an hour, uh, the ability to have the best provides the best outcome for our residents. I live in Forest for over 25 years, love it there, love the county. I would head to Strathroy for service and I would be really happy that we have the, the top best equipment that's possible. It's not a Cadillac, but it's a really good piece of equipment. And in healthcare, you need to have that level of service. So in summation, and we'd more than welcome to take any questions, our request is for an essential life-saving piece of equipment. Uh, used 40 to 50 times a day, a resident of Lambton County walks into our hospital for service. With this and with the support of other municipalities that we will approach and have approached and that are funding, we'll be able to service with a, with a higher, more efficient, more accurate, and better piece of equipment to the 50,000 people that use it annually. So I, I thank you for your time. I respectfully request that you uh, seriously consider this in your funding. I know budgets are tight, and I know there are many demands. I know that from my term as the Chief Administrative Officer. But I also know that health is the number one item uh, in people's mind, and quite often overlooked until it becomes a crisis. Help us prevent the crisis. Help us provide the best service and the quality of care to residents of Lambton County that we would want for our own families. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor Case? Yes, uh, Mr. Warden, I would uh, make a motion to refer this to budget discussion in March. Second by Councillor Buzowitz. Question, Councillor Gilliland. First of all, thank you, Mr. Warden, and thank you for your presentation. I appreciate what you're trying to do and, and the fact that we have a number of people use your hospital. It comes to mind that uh, I'm from St. Clair Township, and we're adjacent to Chatham-Kent, and we have Wallaceburg Hospital there, and a number of our people use the Wallaceburg Hospital. So I would anticipate they're going to be speaking to us as well when they see this in the press. <laughs> and, <we're going> to <laughs> and I just caution everybody about this because they are a fundamental need to our township. And, and I would expect probably Don Euphemia has been in the same boat with Wallaceburg. Thank you. Councilor McGugan. Yeah, Mr. Warden, members of County Council, thank you ever so much uh, for that presentation. I do appreciate the, the gentleman that did come to my home, and we had a great discussion. And immediately when I see all these requests for money, my immediate reaction as a poor farmer is to say automatically no. But after having the discussion and doing the math, and if Lambton County population stays the same as it is, which is about 126 or 7,000, it's $100,000 a year, which does add up to a million dollars. I did the math, hope the calculator was right. It worked out to 80 cents per person in Lambton County per year. So that's $8 uh, over the next 10 years. So I do say thanks for the presentation. I was amazed at the number of responses you had from Brooke Albertson. So thanks for the information. I appreciate it. Councillor Bradley and then Councillor Broad. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to serve notice a motion that we need to... Um, we need to develop consistency on these health care requests. And I've met with the group, and uh, I understand what, exactly what you're asking for. Uh, but uh, the Deputy Mayor of St. Clair mentioned Wallsburg, and I understand they're in the batting order. Blue Water Health is probably coming back within the year to look for more funds. And I think we need to develop a consistency of how we deal with these applications. It's not, nothing to do with your request, per se. It's just that we need consistency because I understand it's easier to go to the local level and we're more responsive, um, but the requests are piling up. And I remember the controversy on the $15 million for Blue Water Health. And maybe out of that, we should have had consistency. We've given to Newberry twice. And as the mayor of Sarnia, I certainly supported that because I understand the catchment area. But we need to be more consistent on how much we'll give for your sake and for our sake in the future because I don't see these requests shrinking. As the, as the capital needs grow and the, and the, the difficulty with the province grows. So uh, I'll just serve that as a notice of the motion and I'll maybe discuss with the treasurer how we could develop something that in general would be fair in future years for these type of requests. 
Okay, Councillor Broad. Uh, through you, Warden, I want to thank the group for their uh, presentation. And I sit here right now, and we've had two presentations, or two delegations ahead of us. We had one that was asking for 35000 to fix a bad lease agreement. We had another one that's asking for 300000 a year for two employees. And now we get a presentation for $100,000 a year for a life-saving piece of equipment. Pretty easy for me to figure out which one I should be going for. And I'm here to support them on, on their request. Uh, they're very important to the Dewberry Hospital, which looks after a large number of Don Euphemia. I think by the numbers that they present, that was a great job because I didn't realize that Strathroy was used so much by Lambton County. But I'm going to give you a little story of 10 years ago. Um, I had a family member that was very sick. She went to Newberry Hospital. It was my daughter. She went to Newberry Hospital, went through some tests. Immediately, they sent her to Strathroy. The very piece of equipment they're talking about was very vital to saving her life. And they did an excellent job at Strathroy, but they immediately moved her on to London. The specialist at London, the first thing he said was, Newberry Strathroy did a fabulous job. They saved your daughter's life. So I'm here to support this request. I agree 100% with Mike. We need a plan because this isn't going to stop. The, the requests aren't going to stop, and I have no problem supporting. Ten years ago, you would ask me about supporting a hospital. I said, absolutely not. That's the province of Ontario's job. But it's changed. If we don't support them, Nobody else is. But like I said, we have a $35,000 request to fix a budget or a bad lease, $300,000 for two employees, now $100,000 for a piece of life saving equipment. Pretty easy for me. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Buzowitz. Thank you, Mr. Warden, and thank you, Councillor Bradley, for. Save me some time because I was going to do exactly the same notice of motion, and uh, now I can allocate that time to to to, to, to other time-consuming issues that I face, and and I am not sure because I I think it's important that the report that we may require and plan we're going to create looks a little bit outside of just the immediate vicinity. Our hospital in Sarnia may require those things. So it's, it's sort of moving back. I don't know whether Blue Water Health did approach or the, because obviously any, any progress in our hospital affects everybody else. The, uh, the, uh, the, 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 just the numerical statistics are not fully reflecting the, the value of this particular investment. Because what happens? People actually it takes a load of, say, London or whatever, so, uh, you know, and, and the flexibility. You know, like I always had this mantra for years and years, and it hasn't changed. Health is wealth. And, uh, and investment in healthcare is productive investment. People can go back to, to, to work and uh, be productive members of the society. So I'm leaning towards support for, for the request. I will look at specific numbers and the fairness of the, the size of the request, and I will. Uh, uh, there, there will be support to some funding from me, perhaps even full. But I have to dig into the very specifics and look at the fairness to to, to all the patients in in our uh, jurisdiction. Thank you, Councillor Gillis, and Councillor Case. Uh, thank you, Warden Weber. I have uh, two questions, really. One is for Mr. Innes. With regard to uh, um, taxpayers' dollars going outside of Lambton County, I thought that there was something that we had in place that we couldn't do that, but is, is that a hard and fast rule? May, uh, the, uh, one of the uh, rules, if you want to call it that, for the council grants is that any monies provided should be provided to an organization uh, that is providing a benefit to uh, the residents of the county. We do give preference to an organization that is also um, domiciled within the county here as well. Um, but you have in the past, I think it was alluded to, uh, provided uh, funding to uh, both four counties, um, to Strathroy, Middlesex, and uh, at least one other hospital outside of the area as well. So the argument there has always been the fact that you've been looking out for and providing funding towards services that benefit uh, the people of Lambton County. So the overarching uh, requirement has always been, is there a de demonstrable 
benefit to the residents here that warrants spending the money. Uh, so there is no conflict with the concept of supporting this. Thank you um, for clarifying that because clearly we have a situation here where a number of people from Lambton County are utilizing Strathroy's service. And that, quite frankly, I don't think is going to diminish in any way as we see hospitals specialize in various treatments. Uh, that's the whole point of, of doing what they're doing. One community has a specialty with cataract surgery. Another community has specialization with orthopedic surgery. And on and on it goes. So clearly there's going to be more... Uh, you're quite right, uh, Councillor Bradley. There's going to be more um, uh, requests for funding, but bearing in mind that this is aiding people who live in Lambton County. And I wasn't here during the, uh, the days that the discussion was on with regard to uh, the funding for Blue Water Health. But I do know that there was a generosity of spirit um, amongst, although uh, I know it was contentious, but there was a generosity of spirit amongst all county councillors, even though they may not themselves or their community may not have used Blue Water Health to the extent that um, other communi closer communities did. But we banded together and recognized that those uh, uh, citizens of our area needed that. Now we're looking at a situation where there's specialization and our citizens are using those specializations even though they're not within our boundaries. So with that, um, I personally feel very strongly about this as well because family members have used Strathroy Hospital for orthopedic surgery. And I think that we should be supporting this 100%. How we roll it out is one thing, but this is universal health care and People are looking to the counties um, to, to fill in the gaps that the province and the feds have, have left open. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Case, you had the motion that to refer this to budget. Uh, you would like to speak to it? I'd like to speak to it, Mr. Warden, if I could. Uh, the reality is there's a health funding crisis in Ontario. And I, like Mayor Broad, if you would have come to me with this request back eight, nine years ago, the answer would have been no, it's a provincial responsibility. But the, prov the province isn't getting the job done. That's it, you know, that's it at the end of the day. Um, so again, my mindset has changed a little bit around this issue um, since seven, eight, nine years ago. So again, at the end of the day, the hospital in Strathroy does an amazing job. The services they offer are absolutely incredible. They're into now offering services around cancer and other specialty medicines. Um, we talk about hip replacements, knee replacements, and they do serve all of Lambton County. I saw the statistics. I saw the numbers. There's an awful lot of people from Sarnia that utilize the Strathroy Hospital as well. And that's good because our hospitals are there to help people at the end of the day. They don't recognize boundaries. So I, too, can support this ask, and I will do that at budget time. Okay. I mean, this is a service to all of us in Lambton County for which we all benefit from. So that's all I have to say, Mr. Warden. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, if there's no other comments, the motion was on the floor to, uh, to uh, refer this to budget process. All in favor of that. That's carried. Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. Our next, uh, next presentation uh, with a grant request is from the Decker Bauer Foundation for Su Suicide Prevention. the button and thank you warden and counselors for allowing me to come today and present I'm very excited to be here because I was here three years ago so I want to show you uh, where we've gone in those last three years and where we're going 
So this was uh, my daughter-in-law and I, well, I guess I should tell you who I am. I am the CEO and co-founder of the Decker Bauer Foundation for Suicide Prevention. And my daughter-in-law sitting out there is the other co-founder. She's in the picture here with me. So we started this um, three years ago, a little over three years ago after I lost my son to suicide. And we realized that something in our community was missing. And um, so there we are. Um, this is when we presented to um, the city of Sarnia first. And with our business plan that I had never created, with our first business plan with an idea of what we wanted to do. How do I change this? There we go. And here we are, October 22nd. That is the very first suicide prevention resource center of its kind in Canada. Um, this was, like I said, it was an idea I had. Um, it took us just a little over three years to bring it to fruition. We became a registered charity in 2015, March 2015, and we started raising money at that time. That house that you see there, we do not pay rent. We do not pay utilities. Uh, it was donated to us from the church, the uh, Central Baptist Church. That's their manse. It was not being utilized, and they offered it to us. So this is where our center is on the weekends. And we, um, it is named Decker's Place. These are the cards that we hand out with the cell phone number on it. Um, They're all around the county for anyone that uh, needs to talk. They give that number a call, a text, or they can come into the center. So this is our mission to strive to understand and help prevent suicide through research, education, and advocacy, which we have been doing um, since we started. This is a... Risk, uh, risk assessment we had done before we opened. I'm hopefully getting a summer student this summer and we are going to have this updated for us. But as of um, 2013, these were the statistics um, for Sarnia Lambton, the risk factors involved. Um, and I think you all have a copy of that in your package that you got. So you might be able to, or you can um, look at that at your leisure. So you will see the different agencies we have in our community. Um, we have amazing uh, agencies. We have St. Clair Child and Youth, Family Counseling Center, Sarnia Lambton Suicide Prevention Committee, Blue Water Health, uh, and then we have Central Lambton Family Health Team in Petrolia. So um, they all have their own special specialties that they do, but what things were that were missing, and that's what we came up with, was um, accessibility to advisors in a comfortable space during evening, overnight, and weekends, which is what we are doing. Um, free services for all, all age demographics. Uh, the youngest we have served in our center is nine years old and the oldest has been 74. Um, there is low to no wait time for coming in and we are working on peer support groups for individuals. Um, uh, we are working with another group within Sarnia. We're gonna do peer support groups for um, family members that have lost a child to suicide to have that because there's nothing out there right now. And for that family member that has a child or a family member that is struggling with mental health to give that peer support group so that they can share resources and such. So this is how much money we have received to date, approximate. You will see the County of Lambton at the top there. And I do have some extra stuff that's gonna be handed out and you'll look on the back. Our logo is on our website. It's on all of our, um, all of our marketing materials because we did receive $20,000 and from the County of Lambton and that purchased all of our furnishings, our computers, our desks, our computer programs. Um, what else do we have in there? Uh, pretty much, like when you walk into the center, everything that's in the center was donated by the County of Lambton. So the County of Lambton helped us get our start where we are. We do have a, um, a, an ongoing grant from United Way. Well, it's done in May uh, for my executive assistant. Lisa Mayer does our tax return um, every year, does not charge us for it. And that's a corporate tax return and audited financials. Um, so the bicycle shop donates to events every year. Carpenters come in and did our um, remodel so that we could be wheelchair accessible. And the painters union come in and did it. And then um, individual donations over the last couple of years in kind and um, monetary. So this is our staff that we have in there at this time. And I'm just gonna say I only have two paid staff. So my executive assistant and my bookkeeper is three hours a day. I myself do not get paid. I am living on disability at the moment, CPP and ODSP. Um, these are our individuals that are within our center on the weekends. These people all work week time jobs. They all have paid positions. We have uh, two individuals with their psych degrees. We have three nurses. We have child and youth workers, social service workers, 
We have people that have double degrees with social service and um, CYW degrees. We have a couple of people that are um, police foundation certification and fireman certification that come in. Um, what else do we have? We just had, um, we have somebody else coming in that just, uh, he has a psych degree as well as um, special needs degree, which he will be joining our team um, after this week. So we have a, a very diverse group of individuals that are our advisors. So these are the clients we've served since we've opened. So I think, I know our statistics from this has changed. I think we're up to 55 clients have come through our doors and we are only opened from 7 a.m. to 11, 11 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. So we are averaging two clients per shift, or two clients per day, sorry. And these are the suicides at the bottom that we've had just since the end of October. So we had 12 men between the ages of 34 and 55, and seven youth between uh, under the age of 24. And that's just in our, that's just in Sarnia, Lambton. So this is what I'm here to ask for today. Um, I have, I, you'll see in the next slides after this that I have applied for grants and um, I'll go into that after that. So this is, um, the board had decided that it was time that I started getting paid, and this is a number that they came up with. We're, um, our advisory lead is our person that's in charge of our clients on the weekend. Um, bookkeeper, obviously, I have her for three hours a day now. I would love to have her three hour, or eight hours a week. Or three hours a week right now, I would love to have her eight hours a week. And a human resource person, because we are getting um, a larger staff that we do need to have certain things put into place for them, even though they are volunteers, we do need to have those contracts and, and agreements signed. So um, as you can see at the bottom there, uh, I've been putting in about um, 60 hours a week. I've slowed back a little bit since we moved into the center because now it's out of my apartment. Um, so I can't just go and do work at any time. And um, executive assistant, like I said, a grant from United Way and I already explained all the rest. So, so these are the different things that we've applied for. So I did apply to United Way for a grant. If we are accepted, it will not start until April 2019. Um, Bell Let's Talk, we've applied twice already and have been turned down. But now that our center's open, we're hoping this year when we apply that we will get put through. Um, County of Lambton, we're here today with you now. Uh, we did apply to the city of Sarnia, but we were denied. Uh, understandable. And the Trillium, we do not meet any of their criteria. They've changed over the last few years. We are not, um, the seed grant is for projects that are in conceptual stage. Obviously, we've op opened our center. Uh, grow grants, ours, um, we are working on this. We aren't evidence-based per se. We're working on that because we do have staff in there from different uh, fields. They're bringing their expertise to our center. So... We are kind of evidence-based, but not enough for them. And then the capital grants, because we don't pay rent or utilities, we can't, we can't get into that. And then the collective impact grants is when different agencies and stuff are coming together for the same outcome. We do work with other agencies in the community, but um, not in the way that they want us to. So, and we are working with all level of, levels of government. You would have received the letter from Marilyn Gladue. I do have a letter of support from Bob Bailey in the package, as well as one from Ralph Ganter from the Lens. I've been with meetings with them. Marilyn has taken our cause all the way to Ottawa, trying to get funding, because right at this moment, there's zero dollars in the federal and provincial government for suicide prevention. There is for mental health, and mental health and suicide prevention don't always go hand in hand. Nine times out of ten, they do. My son was not diagnosed with a mental illness, yet he still completed suicide, as many of the stories I've heard since he completed suicide. So that being said, um, this is why we're here today, because like I said, we are a brand new initiative in Canada. We are the first of its kind in Canada. There are two other suicide preventions. They are both websites. CASP is a website with numbers to go to, and Ontario Suicide Prevention is a website with places to go. So the reason probably why there are no dollars in the budget for suicide prevention, and that's why we're here today. And this would be a one-time thing. Like I said, we are working with the governments, trying to get that changed. Even Ralph Ganter, you'll notice in his letter, he's working on trying to get that changed as well. Okay. Thank you for your presentations. Is there any questions or a motion to refer this? Uh, Councillor Gilliland? Thank you for the presentation, Warden. I do have one question. Uh, I thought I heard you say there was a couple of people that needed help per day. Is that true? Yes. Okay. 
Yes, we have an average of um, just on the weekends, and I'm not going to say just on the weekends. Um, we have people come through the center during the week, and I don't have the training, but my advisors are amazing. I can pick up the phone, and I can call them, and I will have an advisor into the center within minutes. Follow-up? So here's the question. How do these people find you? Are they referred to by the police or the hospital, or how does that happen? They find us on um, Facebook or um, our web page. We've been on the radio. Um, right now, that's where we're working. I'm um, trying to work with Jane. She's a crisis nurse at the hospital, and she's been wanting to come to our center, but we've been so crazy um, right now because we have events going on, and uh, we our, our schedules aren't... Um, so she can't come over, but she does want to come and see our facility so that they can be handing out brochures. Because if it's someone that comes into the emergency department that just needs to talk, they don't need to be sitting in a merge waiting for a crisis nurse. They could come to our center. Because that's what we're doing. We don't uh, counsel in our center. We have agencies that do the counseling. They come in, they vent, we refer them to the other agencies or help them navigate the system to get to the agency they need. Or if they are in crisis when they come to us, our staff will walk them to the hospital because we are steps from the hospital and stay with them until they see a crisis nurse. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Gillis and Councillor Bushik. Uh, thank you, Warden Weaver, members of County Council. I can uh, attest firsthand that this is a very good center. I had the privilege of being involved in a fundraising uh, in, at Christmas time with friends of mine, Leanne Morin and Tessa Kent, and some of you may know. And um, um, my friend Leanne uh, experienced this in her family and uh, did utilize the services um, that she found out from word of mouth. So it, it does work. Um, they have nothing but praise to say about the Derek Bauer Foundation. I was privileged to be part of that a fundraising organization for you. Um, so th they are known in the community. The word is getting out. Thank you. Councillor Boucher? Um, I'm a member of the church uh, that she mentioned. We donated uh, the house right, right next to the church for this organization. And I work with the city and, and the church to, to make this happen. The question I have for her is, could you repeat to me what you need actually right now in, in that home, in that house? What we need in the home, the home is actually filled. What we need is funding for staff. But we have everything in the center due to the $20,000 we got from the County of Lambton and the generosity of the community. At Christmas time, we put a call out for decorations, and we had boxes and boxes and boxes of Christmas decorations come in. And we put a call out for, um, um, we had a few uh, homeless individuals that we found sleeping in the church property. And they wouldn't come and take anything from us, but we put a call out to get some blankets, and we got boxes and boxes of homemade blankets, so um, and some um, personal items as well, like shampoos, body wash, and conditioner. So we have all of we have everything like that. It's just it's the it's the dollars to start paying the staff. Follow up. Follow up. Uh, just a, a question to the staff: Do we donate uh, allocate money for the staff? Mr. Innes? Under the, uh, the council grants uh, criteria that you have, uh, you've always supported uh, a capital investment. You've stayed away from providing uh, funding for operational funds. Thank you. Um, motion on this. So we have no motion on the floor. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Do we refer this to uh, budget or Councillor Buzowicz? I move to refer it to the budget. Seconded by Councillor Gillis. Questions? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, two more presentations left. We might have to order lunch. Yeah? We have, um, with uh, the lamp, we could have a five-minute break. I was going to do the two presentations, and then we have a, uh, but if you, if council's ready for a five-minute break, all right.
We'll take a break for five minutes. Uh, we'll make the delegations uh, wait a little. Who's next? Uh, item C, we have uh, Cynthia Cook, Sean Robbins, and John Berengar dealing with the uh, Sarnia Lampton Crime Stoppers. So I'd ask you to come forward now and make your presentation. Now that everybody will be calm and rested. and whenever you're ready. Yeah. Warden, councillors, we thank you on behalf of Sarnia Lampton Crime Stoppers for the opportunity to address you today. We want to talk for a moment about who are Crime Stoppers. Crime Stoppers, we are we are a board of 12 volunteers. Our only staff members are two one-quarter time staff members. They are there so that we can have our office manned for half days because our staff alternates weeks. What is Crime Stoppers? We accept tips from the public on crimes that have been committed or that anybody knows is about to be committed. We have a motto that says, if you see something or hear something, say something. We ensure anonymity for the uh, caller, for the tipster that sends us in tips. Then we pass these tips on to the various law enforcement agencies. And then if charges are laid or a crime is solved, we pay a reward to those tipsters. Our coordinators take the calls during the time of day when they are in the office, but at all other times, 24 hours a day, 24-7, the calls then, when we don't have somebody in the office, are taken by a call center. We have recently had a call center that was a public call center, and we've received several complaints from people trying to call Crime Stoppers about the time it took to get through, the attention they were getting. So the Canadian Crime Stoppers Association, as of November, has created their own call centre, and it is unique to Crime Stoppers. The um, people who man these phones are well trained in Crime Stoppers requirements. In 2017, the service cost us little over $8,000. And how does Crime Stoppers function? Up until 2014, the Ontario Provincial Police provided us with a full-time coordinator, which they paid. At that time, Constable Mark Dew retired, and the Ontario Provincial Police chose not to support any staff for us. At that time, our volunteer board agreed that we could handle our administrative requirements with just the board of 12 volunteers and two one-quarter time staff members, or a half-time staff member is what I'm really trying to say. Each of these staff workers works 520 hours a week, uh, uh, 520 hours a year, pardon me, at $25 an hour for a total of 13,000. That's not including any of the uh, government EI and CPP. That's just their base salary. Sarnia Police does support us. They provide us with uh, pay for one of those staff members. They provide us with an office in the Sarnia Police uh, building. They provide us with a computer and support and a meeting room for our uh, monthly board meetings. And they also provide us with gas for our van. Our capital assets are nil. We have a fully depreciated trailer that we use for parades along with our uh, mascots. Our van is provided for us by a local business and our computer is provided both the computer and support for it by the Sarnia Police Service. 
our fundraising in 2017 consisted of six major fundraisers. We received net fundraising revenue of $35,000, 35,000 a little over. But it did take 570 volunteer hours. This does not include the time that our board members spend at board meetings and other administrative and community duties. This is just for fundraising. And our board members, our volunteer board members, have indicated that this was very, very heavy. We would not have made our operational requirements this year had it not been for the generous donation from the warden's picnic this year, slightly over $5,000. And warden, we thank you very much for that. We do appreciate it because it did keep us afloat. Thank you. Thank you to everyone. What does Crime Stoppers do for the county? Well, we receive over 500 tips a year. We understand that some of those tips are frivolous, but it's a, a substantial number. And we disperse those to the OPP for the purposes of the county, to the Sarnia Police Service, and other law enforcement agencies, like the Coast Guard, uh, like the Border Services, like the uh, Federal Justice Department, and, and others as required. We have paid rewards in the last while, authorized rewards for tips, that have varied from about $150 each up to uh, one high one at $2,000, and that, would, you can appreciate, was for a very major uh, drug bust. We also do identity theft and fraud presentations. We find that uh, seniors in particular are terrified about the phone calls they're getting, or they're terrified about the fraud that they hear of going on on their computers and their telephones. So we do provide these uh, seminars for service clubs, seniors groups, church groups. Um, we did the presentation uh, in 2017 uh, in the Wyoming uh, Legion building, as a matter of fact, for uh, about 105 members of the uh, Sarnia Lampton Retired Lady Teachers Association, as a for instance. And we've done these presentations in Petrolia and in Wyoming, Corona, Port Franks, and Point Edward. We are also soliciting, we have put out to churches and uh, community groups and other places like Forest and Grand Bend that uh, uh, could use our service as well. We provide this uh, no charge, although we have received some small honorariums for doing it. What can we do for the county? In addition to the services that we provide, we have just recently established an ad hoc committee to determine how we can spread education into the county. Education more so on the identity and theft presentation, but also education on what Crime Stoppers is and what crime is. We are, we've uh, determined that this year our committee will attempt to hold four of our monthly board meetings in county locations instead of uh, only in the Sarnia Police Service uh, boardroom. And we are looking for ways with this committee to involve more county members. I have with me tonight, and I'm sorry I didn't introduce her earlier, um, Cynthia Cook is, uh, uh, does her, has her business and, her, uh, and she lives in um, Lambton Shores. Pardon me, I always trip over that word. I'm sorry about that. And we realize that we realize what was stated earlier. Uh, we have been given a set of the criterion for what involves grants from the county. We don't meet those criteria. For one thing, we don't have capital assets, and we don't require capital assets because we are, have enough to look after our needs. And also, it is required by the terms of reference that we are financially solvable without county help. And I must say that we made it only this year because of the, uh, the grant from the, uh, from the wardens. And again, we thank you for that. But with that in mind, we'd say, we ask what can the county do for Crime Stoppers? We ask that in order to continue and increase our service to the communities, 
of the Lambton County, we respectfully request a subsidy payment from the county in the amount of $13,000. It is one of the smaller ones for the county today, we realize that, but to Crime Stoppers, it is enormous. And we make this request. It is the equivalent of one of our quarter time staff members. Warden, members of the council, we thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation. Thank you for that. Is there any questions for clarifications, Councillor Knopper? Yeah, I think it was a very good presentation. Will you be um, going out to each individual municipality looking for funding too? <clears throat> I'm sorry, sir. Will we be going to each municipality? What was the last part of that question? Asking for funding. No, sir. We are not. Okay. Councillor Han. Thank you for your presentation. It was informative. I just had a question um, when I was reading the material around a, a gap with the OPP. So the OPP no longer participates in any type of funding, and yet you're passing them information to help them. So has there been any attempt to go and make a request to, to have them be part of the payment or part of the funding? Councillor, thank you for the question. Um, we have made uh, approaches at the time when they cut off uh, giving us any kind of support. We did ask them for financial support, and they have declined. And they have declined on the basis that they, as their support at the various Crime Stoppers operations in Ontario, have uh, uh, had um, someone retire or no longer had that particular coordinator, that they are not funding or supporting them in any way. We have asked for that, and we are not getting it. We do, because it's, because it's our mandate to try and solve and prevent crimes, we still pass on tips to the OPP. We're not, we don't intend, we're not going to be uh, vindictive about that, and uh, we're not, we don't intend to uh, stop that. But we do ask, because there are so many uh, tips that are going into the county, I'm not sure exactly what the percentage is, but I would suggest that probably of the uh, tips that we get, uh, there's probably uh, somewhere around 25 to 30 percent of them go to the OPP and the remainder to other, uh, which would be county, obviously, and the others are going to other law enforcement agencies. Okay, thank you. Councillor Bradley? A question to Mr. Innes. Um, this was a grant that was given out before. Uh, that's correct. Uh, the uh, organization was previously uh, funded. Um, it, uh, the last uh, year that there was a payment, or pardon me, the last year there was a payment made uh, was uh, in 2006 and 2007. Uh, they indicated that uh, they had uh, other forms of revenue. They were striving to be self-sufficient. And uh, they uh, basically said that uh, they respectfully thanked the, or the county for its support, but did not need further support at that point in time. After that time period, a number of grants, could you make the case that this is just a grandfathered grant that's being reactivated? Sorry. Um, so yes, uh, this was one of the grants uh, that uh, was continued after Council adopted the, the policy that it would only uh, uh, provide funding for uh, capital projects. Uh, there were a number of uh, grants, uh, and we see, you'll see those, another example would be the um, agricultural societies or the women's institutes. Uh, those are you know, funds that are provided for whatever purpose. And uh, this fall into that, fell into that category that uh, these were this was funding that had historically been provided, and the council of the day felt that it should be continued. Um, it was not a uh, decision of council to terminate it because of uh, the change in rules or procedures. Um, it was a voluntary uh, withdrawal of the request for funding from them. So yes. Uh, the original uh, argument for continuing the grant could be considered to still be in effect. Okay. 
Is there a motion to refer this to budget? Uh, Councillor Case and Councillor Gillis. Any further questions? All in favor of that? Opposed? Thank you. Thank you for your presentation. And we have our uh, final grant uh, presentation this morning. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, this is uh, regarding community living in Sarnia Lampton. And I see a name here, Mr. John Haggins, but I don't see a John coming forward. <laughs> no, it sounds like you're right now. <laughs> okay. So Becky Wurzma and Kathy Hoof. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. you. Just that little button on the microphone will get you started. And yep. Thank you, Warden Council members. Um, I'm Becky Borsma. I am the Director for Community Employment and Day Options at Community Living. And this is Kathy Hoof. She is our Community First Approaches Coordinator. <coughs> Excuse me, I am struggling with quite a cold this morning. Um, it gives us great pleasure to be here to speak with you today about Community Living Sarnia Lampton um, and its transition from sheltered work to Community First Approaches. As many of you know, Community living has been around for over 60 years. We employ over 220 staff people and offer supports and services to more than 300 individuals with developmental disabilities, <coughs> excuse me, um, and their families throughout Lambton County. Um, we also, some of those supports um, include residential, um, housing options, various parental programs, um, a lot of social, social recreation programs, as well as our former Wawanosh Enterprises. So Wawanosh Enterprises uh, was developed in 1962. There was, um, the purpose at the time was to assist people develop skills um, when they were not able to work in the community. Over the years, we had developed a lot of um, connections with um, the, the generous community of Sargi Lampton, and we're involved in gasket manufacturing, woodwork, um, and various industrial contracts. Um, but it's time for change. Um, <coughs> and in um, December, as of December 22nd, we finished our last contract. We are now moving towards community first approaches. I'm gonna let Kathy talk a little bit more about that. So what we want, what we wanted to do when we ended our work activity is to say to those 76 people, what do you want to do now? How is it that we can make <coughs> those connections in the community that can fill your days meaningfully and it, so that they wake up every morning as excited to come and enjoy activities as, and work that uh, they did as when they were going to their sheltered work activity. As we go through our sessions, what we've, what we've established really is a series of eight week sessions. In those sessions, what we explore with folks is we take them on a bit of a journey of self-discovery. In their past lives, when they were in sheltered work, they went to work and they went home. They have very busy social lives, um, so very frequently trying to fit in things with their social life is a bit different than filling their day life. What we experience now is when they come, what do they do from 8.30 until 4 when they leave? We've spoken with a number of agencies throughout Ontario. We've been traveling around actually with our employment department. And we're fortunate enough to be able to 
speak with a lot of agencies. We're just starting this process right now in Sarnia Lambton. There are other agencies that have been doing it for two or three years now. So I spoke with them. What are you doing? How are you doing it? And just in the, eight, in the couple of sessions that we've run right now, and we're ending our second se eight-week session on Friday, and as people experience new things, I mean, truth is, you don't know what you don't know. When we introduce them to new experiences, there's, I don't know, this excitement where they're coming in the morning and they're, okay, what are we doing today? What will we be able to learn today? Because with every experience comes learning. If we go to the Norman and Alex, um, Norman, what's that called? Norman, the, the art gallery. <laughs> Thank you. Um, when we went, we did some research. What is that art gallery? What's there? What can we learn so that we already have a little bit of knowledge before we go? Then we experience it in a different way. Then we come back and we talk about the research that we did. Well, did we learn anything that we didn't already know? What did we experience? So we're connecting folks with absolutely everything that we can in the community. A big part of, of what you see on the slide up here is volunteer work. I've volunteered all of my life. My best friends to this very day, I met volunteering. So you, <coughs> when, <coughs> when you, when we as an agency want to develop social capital, social capital is about relationships, right? Those relationships that I developed in my volunteer work, I want to assist the folks that I'm working with to develop also. Make those connections. When we volunteer, there are friendships made. Um, so we are doing our very best. I mean, there's an agency in Ontario that I speak with, and she says, listen, my phone rings off the hook. Agencies call us every single day from all over their community um, to ask for volunteers. Volunteers setting up chairs. They have an event. Somebody needs to set up the chairs. Someone needs to do a lot of things. And that's how we want to really become more intertwined with our whole county. Um, and we've only just started. Um, we started this process. Our first <clears throat> session began just after Thanksgiving. And uh, we will continue. And, and our main focus really is for right now to engage those 76 people that need their lives filled. Um, further than that, then we have an agency who will back all that up with their support staff and their families. We work very closely with families also. So, okay. Um, so why are we here? Um, though we're embracing change, um, it doesn't come without its challenges. Um, Wawanosh has always historically been funded um, by Ministry of Community and Social Services for about 70% of its funding. Um, the rest of it is gen was generated through all of our revenues, um, which helped pay for our lease at Luger, helped with supports and services for individuals, some staffing costs and those kind of things. Um, the ministry is not pulling our funding uh, when they've uh, made the direction for change. Um, we are keeping that 70% of our funding, but that comes with a shortfall. Um, and that shortfall equates to about $150,000 in annualized funding um, from revenues that will no longer happen. As well, um, there are one-time termination costs approximating about $250,000 um, from the loss of our industrial staff. Um, and so we have um, made great strides in doing some strategic planning on how are we going to deal with the shortfall over the long haul. Um, we've hired a consultant, Joe Dale, to assist us um, with that. We've made commitments um, to reducing our costs. Uh, we will be um, letting the lease at Luger go um, as of March 2019 to reduce those costs. 
Um, we've made commitments to uh, not hire uh, the supervisory positions that um, were terminated until those costs have been recouped. Um, so we've got done everything that we can um, at this point um, to, to look at the long term and how do we maintain viable. Uh, we're leaders uh, in employment throughout employment or throughout um, the province and we believe that we can be leaders in um, transition into community and community part participation uh, but it's the short term. It's the how and now. Do we get things done with people? So Kathy was talking about um, the volunteer work that people are, are out in the community were, that we're wanting people to um, be able to do out in the community. She was talking about connections and going to art galleries and um, connecting people to all of the local resources that Sarnia has to offer, um, Strangway Center, and, and there's so many, um, to name a few. But people don't have access um, to get there. So right now, our ask um, is for 49000 um, to help us uh, purchase... <coughs> excuse me again, purchase um, an accessible vehicle which will enable us to um, have help those 76 people get into the community now. Um, we know that we can um, be self-sustaining over time. Um, it's, it's the immediate. How do we get this going now? Um, where do we go from here? <coughs> Thank you. <coughs> and I Thank you. <laughs> Hope you feel better soon. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, Questions, Councillor Buzowitz. Thank you, Mr. Warden. I uh, first have a question, and after the question, I would like to make a little comment. You, I, I didn't quite understand when you were uh, referring to two hundred fifty thousand dollars some termination or something. What's that about? Um, yeah, without getting into um, any personal um, costs, Wawanosh um, was quite an industrial um, facility. And so because we were doing gasket manufacturing um, and woodworking, the staff that we had in place then were hired for those particular skills. Um, they were not staff that were, um, uh, you know, had their, their developmental service worker and were interested in um, let's help get people in the community. That's not their expertise. They were hired for all of their industrial skills. Um, and so that has become a cost for us. Um, we're committed to, to make that happen over the long term. Like I said, we're not replacing a couple positions um, until December of uh, 2018. <coughs> Okay. Thank you, and then I would like to make a little comment. I was really happy to see you using the term that I actually have used in the past, social capital. I've witnessed that in my own life. I volunteered for a few years at the River City Vineyard, and, I and we had some opposition in the neighborhood, and these this people staying there so happily did that. One of the individuals uh, living next to it was the late Jack Fullerton, Homeless shelter resident would go there, shovel the snow, and, and I think from sort of being a little bit doubtful or worried at first, he became a supporter of the, and, uh, and, and uh, you know, I, I've seen so many cases that it, it, the, the, the returning to the productive path starts with uh, social engagement, learning, as you say. I'm absolutely impressed with you, with you realizing that. And, and, and that's good for, for the community, good for the uh, province, good for the country. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Bradley? Are they willing to move this to the budget session? With support, uh, just to make one comment, the uh, general, as part of the group that uh, led the charge on, which created some conflict with community living on these workshops where people were paid minimal funds. And it was quite a debate and there was no right or wrong except it had to end. So I see the social responsibility in the community level is to make that work. And that is the challenge because it's happening right across this province. And I commend community living for moving in this direction. I know it was very difficult because it was, it was I, know, I know the conflict. I know the debate within the organization. And people like Joe Dale, who is part of your group, is part of the group we pushed to make this happen. So I, I just think that this is our ability because we've talked about transportation in this county so many times that we can directly impact on the lives of over 70 people. So I move it with that 
comment to County Council, and I hope that we will support this when we get to March the 7th. It's been moved and seconded by Councillor Case to refer this to budget. To comment, uh, Councillor Gillis. Thank you, Warden Weaver, members of County Council. Just as an observation, uh, I have a niece who is involved in community living, uh, couldn't do anything without community living in the Peterborough area, and they have been phenomenal, and they have made those transitions, and it has been a struggle, but has turned into a very positive experience. So um, kudos to what you're trying to do, and absolutely, totally on board. Thank you. Any other comments? All in favor of that? Thank you. That's referred to budget. Thank you for your presentation. Moving uh, right along, <laughs> we'll, uh, the minutes, uh, minutes of uh, November 29th uh, council meeting, uh, open session from November 29th, moved by Councillor McDougall, seconded by Councillor Broad. Any questions regarding the minutes? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Um, we had a break, so we're not going to have a break now. We need to adjourn. <laughs> this is where I was going to have the break. <laughs> we will. We, we will. So we'll, we'll carry on. Uh, we need to adjourn our council meeting to uh, hold the annual general meeting of the County of Lambton Community Development Corporation. Moved by Councillor Bradley that we adjourn and, and reconvene as the, that committee, seconded by Councillor McGugan. Questions to that? All in favor of that? That's carried. So as this is uh, the corporation, would the chair of the corporation like to take over the chair of this meeting? No, the tradition has been in the past that uh, the warden in the chair chairs the meeting. And I'm, okay. only, I'm certainly pleased to have you do that. Thank you. I'll carry on then. Um, so we have uh, the agenda for this meeting. I had asked, uh, we are sitting now as the uh, Lampton Community Development Corporation Annual General Meeting, uh, the approval of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Gilliland, second by Councillor Case. All in favor of that? That is carried. I uh, would I'll call for a declaration of pecuniary interest. Seeing none. Uh, presentation of financial statements. The 2017 uh, financial statements are in our package. Councillor Bradley. I'm going to move the endorsement of the statements unless Mr. Innes wants to uh, say anything. I'm more than prepared to answer questions, uh, but um, again, if, uh, you know, in general, the observation would be that uh, revenues for the corporation are up, uh, continues to uh, meet its obligations, and uh, it had a clear opinion from the auditors. So. Moved by Councillor Bradley, second by Councillor Broad, that the uh, financial statements be uh, received. Questions, Councillor McGugan. <clears throat> yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Ward, members of the County Council. I do have a couple questions about the financial statement. Maybe it's very clear. Uh, maybe I didn't understand it. On page three, near the bottom, shows an $864,000 loss last year and a total of $9 million. If somebody could just explain what that's all about, I'll have one more question on page 17. Mr. Innes? The, uh, when you take into account uh, the non-cash expenditures uh, that uh, the corporation uh, incurs each year, um, it is running at a, a deficit of revenue over the expenditures. You are correct on that observation. And uh, the accumulated deficit for the corporation is a negative as well. The accumulated um, deficit is a reflection of uh, the debt forgiveness uh, that uh, we had dealt with uh, about five years ago. If you'll recall that they ran into significant uh, 
issues um, and uh, the events that led to the hiring of uh, Mr. Streifler and the turning around of the corporation. So we are still left with uh, that legacy from those events, if you would. The rest of, uh, that's where a huge portion of that comes from. The rest of it is the fact that uh, we have a uh, aging um, infrastructure there and it's the accumulation of uh, the amortization against the original value of the corporations. Part of it is accounting presentation, part of it is to do with the debt, but as I said, for, uh, from an operational standpoint, uh, it continues to uh, keep its own. Uh, there has been no need for an infusion of any support from uh, county taxpayers towards it. Uh, it is still basically maintaining uh, its own and paying its own way as it goes forward. Follow-up, Councillor McGugan? Yeah, thank you for that uh, explanation through the warden. Uh, so they are paying down, and what is it, 2025 or something, that it'll be all paid off? And uh, before you answer, on page uh, 17, uh, just an interesting number there about Omer's. It seemed too low when I know what Omer's charges or what you have to pay. It's only four, four, $1,000 or so. What, is it just one employee? Uh, no, the debt will not be paid off by 2025. It would be very nice if it was. It'll be uh, well beyond that. Uh, there's a, it is roughly, from where we stand right now, an, another uh, 18 years or so, I believe, before uh, we will be uh, reaching the point of paying the debt down. Um, as far as the Omers is concerned, there was only one employee at the research park who is a member of Omers. That is a legacy situation uh, from when uh, the county first assumed responsibility for the park. Uh, when it was acquired in uh, the early part of this century, uh, they, we needed a mechanism to pay the staff that came because there were a number of staff that came over with the park to us. And as a result, uh, we brought uh, people on board and they were uh, offered the same benefits as, uh, as county staff were at that time. So since that point in time, there's been several itinerations and changes. Uh, the, one of those staff person who came over at that time is still there. And so we have continued to uh, keep her enrolled in OMERS going forward. The rest of the employees um, receive a contribution towards a private RSP. Um, it was deemed at the time that it was more conducive to what they were looking for. It was less costly for the corporation as well. And it was actually uh, consistent with the fact that uh, CLCDC employees are not staff of the County of Lambton. Thank you. Any other questions regarding the financial statements? Contributions. Briefly, you referred to private RSP contribution. Uh, so, what, what what would that be? Just a self-directed RSP, or what's the mechanism? We have, uh, sir, or the corporation established a group RSP, so we have a supplier um, that uh, provides access to various investment options of employees. Um, so we have a group plan, so a single provider that we go through. Uh, we use payroll uh, deduction and contribution for that. Uh, the staff are, uh, can make contributions if they want to, in addition to the contribution from the CLCDC. Um, but it's essentially what you would call a group RSP. So individual plans, but uh, being administered together with, uh, with a common set of options available for everybody. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor of the financial statements? That's carried. Thank you. Uh, we have with us uh, now um, Dr. Catherine Albion, who has uh, <clears throat> uh, just uh, taken the position of executive director. And so we welcome you. And uh, you have a PowerPoint presentation of uh, where we are now and, and what's happening at the park. Sorry. Yes, thank you, Warden. And good morning to the council. Um, I'm Catherine Albion. I'm the new executive director of the research park. It's on the screen. Oh, we got the wrong community living presentation. <laughs> there we go. So 
This morning I'll provide you with an overview, a brief overview of our um, increased utilization and value of the park's assets, our research and commercialization activities, and the vision for the park's future. The Western Research Parks has been very successful recently and we have received a number of international recognitions and awards. And this is based on our support of our research and commercialization tenants and their success rate following the graduation from the Western Research Parks. The research park maintains a high occupancy rate at 94%, and this is through a mix of anchor and startup companies. We maintain a run rate of $3.4 million through our real estate revenues. And our commercialization center is home to approximately 30 tenants, ranging from startups and small businesses through conducting research studies and projects that are near commercialization. We have a range of tenants conducting research in our laboratories, including academic research centers, university spin-offs, and startup companies. We also have a number of pilot plants at our site at various stages of the commercialization process. Two of our key partners continue to be Lambton College and Western University, specifically the Faculty of Engineering. We host the research centers, partner on key events, and support the initiatives of each institution to further technology development and innovation. The park is playing a role in the development of the region by providing support to new organizations and companies in various capacities. My strategic priorities for the park include incre further increasing the utilization and uh, value of our assets. I will look to update the business and strategic plans for the park to increase our revenue streams. We will work to maximize our occupancy revenue and to control costs by managing expenditures. Our future commercialization successes will result from broadening our influence in other areas of technology and innovation to create economic growth in collaboration with our key partners. The park is fortunate to have many strong partners in the region to advance our operations and support our tenants' needs. There are additional partners that, we can, that can contribute to the park and the region by supporting our initiatives or as new tenants at the park. Through the development of new sectors that are a fit with the region's existing sectors, new products, processes, and businesses will result. The park will host new companies, collaborations, and projects, and along with our partners, we will cultivate their commercialization success. The park is currently working with our existing partners to create new initiatives that will attract new companies and innovations to the region. Our joint initiatives will bring together the strengths of all partners to support economic growth and development and to build a stronger and better connected community. We are maintaining our occupancy rate with approximately 40 tenants and their 1,200 employees that come to the park site every day. 30 of these tenants are, are companies uh, conducting research and commercialization activities in our commercialization center. And I would like to take this opportunity to invite you to a, an exciting commercialization announcement that will be hosted at the research park on Friday, March 2nd at 10 a.m. In summary, the research park is fulfilling our mandate to support economic growth and development in the region. We have a nearly full occupancy and have expanded the research base in the region, and we have attracted and supported new job creation and economic development. Thank you. Thank you for that presentation. Questions? Councillor Brugzewicz. Uh, you mentioned the capacity just about being fully taken. Do you have any uh, long-range plans for expansion of this capacity since, you know, it is, it is successful operation and sometimes growth comes with success. So any, any plans for the growth 
to address this capacity constraint that we are facing right now? ago uh, we did develop a concept plan for the park so we do have 80 acres of land that we are situated on and through our concept plan we can approximately double the footprint the existing footprint of the research park so if we have a tenant and the appropriate conditions for construction we will look at expansion at that time thank you, thank you. anyone else any further questions Councillor Bradley very good transition uh, from uh, yourself in your position and the board was uh, pleased to pick you uh, but I also want to acknowledge Tom Streifler who's here who was yes. the ED who took it took us from 60 percent uh, capacity up to that uh, mid 90s and uh, did a remarkable job also pleased to say that um, we had a board vacancy and Tom was agreed to stay on to become the new board uh, member and we just have to get them up to speed on how this place works yeah. and stuff. So, but it, it shows you how well the, the, the organization is functioning and the, the, the partnership with Lampton College uh, and, and the other groups in the community. And the March the 2nd announcement, I would really urge everyone to be there because it shows how much we are moving further ahead than other communities. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Yes, there is. Uh, we do need a motion. Uh, where am I getting? For the auditors, we've uh, got a motion to receive this uh, update. Moved by Councillor Broad, second by Councillor Busey. Uh, all in favor of that? That's carried. Uh, other business, we need a motion to appoint. BDO as the auditors, Councillor McDougall, second by Councillor Gillis. Questions? All, all in favor? That's carried. Okay. We also require a motion to confirm the appointment of the officers that as brought forward by the board. Moved by Councillor Case, second by Councillor Buzowicz. Questions? You just wanted to make that motion, didn't you? All in favor of that? That's carried. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't looking your way. I'm sorry, Mr. Councillor Knopper. Any other questions or comments? Any other business? <clears throat> Seeing no other business, I would ask for a motion to adjourn the annual general meeting of the Community Development Corporation. Councillor Knopper and Councillor Veen. All in favor of that? That's carried. Thank you. We will reconvene and continue on with our council meeting. Thank you very much. Correspondence. Uh, item number 11 on the agenda. We have uh, three pieces of, four pieces of correspondence there. Recommendation to receive and file. Councillor McDougall. Second by Councillor McCharles. Any questions on the correspondence? All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. Information reports, uh, item A, from the Going Green Activity Update. Motion to receive, Councillor Veen, second by Councillor McDougall. All in favor of that motion? Opposed? It's carried. We have item number 13, which is uh, items not requiring a motion. Information reports and board minutes. Motion to receive, Councillor Gilliland, Councillor Marriott. All in favor of that? That is carried. Thank you. Uh, reports requiring a Marshall Coast Corporate Services Division. This is an update on the Sarnia Lampton Partnership and a report on the schedule. And I think this is a receive for information. That's correct. Councillor Gillis. Second by Councillor Hand. Any questions regarding that? All in favor of that? That's carried. Thank you. And the committee minutes from uh, January 17th, and I would ask uh, Deputy or Vice Chair 
Marriott to uh, present. Thank you, Warden Weber. Members of County Council, the uh, AM committee did meet on January 17th, the Infrastructure Development Services, Public Health Services, and Cultural Services, and I uh, submit the uh, minutes as presented. Thank you. Item number one, uh, nominate Steve Arnold for chair. Item two, Kevin Marriott, vice chair. Item three, appointing Kevin Merritt to the Agriculture Advisory Committee. Item four, appoint the Audit Committee. Item five, dealt with correspondence. Item six, with the Woodlands Annual Report. Item seven, regarding pedestrian crossing, Councillor Knapper. Uh, thank you very much. I guess... Uh this report's coming back. The first one, you didn't like what you saw in there. You were like I. You thought you were going to go around the municipalities and, and pick out what everybody else was using. Is that what I'm hearing? or is... Like everybody knew the guidelines in there. I was kind of disappointed with that report. I didn't think it went far enough. Okay. Uh, who would like to speak to it? Councillor Bradley? Just to say to Mayor Knapper that what happened was that the committee... Uh, we didn't have enough information. We wanted a high-level understanding of those guidelines, and that's going to come back to us. I think that's the fair explanation of what happened. I think it was for more clarification of what is in the MTO Guideline 15, Book 15. So I think there's going to be some more information coming back regarding that. A follow-up. I thought that they were going to contact each municipality and see what was already in place and what was working best. Uh, we all got the, uh, what is it, that, that act, they come out there telling us, thou shalt do this and thou shalt not do that. We're all aware of that. We just went through a study here in Wyoming. But what I was looking for, and I think or, or maybe instigated this, was what really works. Like, you know, why would we continue putting up crossings like we got in Wyoming if they're not working? And maybe you got one in Sinclair that's excellent or Sarnia. And that's what I thought was maybe coming back to just give us a little guidance. Through you, Mr. Chair, um, I, I think uh, uh, that high-level uh, review of pedestrian crossings in the county and, and uh, how to establish a standard uh, in the county, what we heard was uh, from, from the report that did come back was that there are many individual cases that are go and those individual cases are going to dictate the need for each of those crossings, um, that the provincial standard is there to provide that guidance. And uh, in, our, in our committee meeting, um, uh, we were asked just to further explain uh, that so that we can continue the discussion as to whether that is the most appropriate approach is to take that OTM book, uh, uh, th that OTM book uh, analysis and apply that to the county as a general rule. Okay. Thank you. Uh, item number eight, uh, road widening dedications. Item 9, and no parking restrictions on Nauvoo Road. Item 10, regarding 2016 census data. Item 11, Southwest Middlesex Agreement. Councillor Bradley. Is there a most admission missing from the census gathering? I thought we had instructed the warden and deputy warden. Is this in there somewhere else? That's, yeah, that's a different... That was a different more than we were going to talk to First Nations? Yes. That's... that's okay, sorry. I just, yes, I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. Okay. Item 12, building service staffing levels. Item 13, OM Board Appeals. Councillor Knopper. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I've been sitting here waiting all day for this one, and uh, at the risk of sounding like uh, Bill Bilton used to, sometimes you've been around too long, and this is one of those cases. I think the, there's a misinterpretation here. Everybody's got a different definition of what's happening out there, and uh, I really feel that the future of the Lakeshore, of the Lakeshore area was established some 30 years ago, and it served as well with uh, the restricted agriculture use. It was always uh, 
addressed as uh, future residential. And this was substantiated by the actions of the provincial government, the county, the town of Plimpton, Wyoming, and uh, it started way back when, when the, uh, the Old Dominion Road was, uh, the Lakeshore Road went in there. If you look back in the history, people have met out there, uh, uh, several, uh, all the, the mayors, I guess, or I guess it'd be Reeves of the day, along with the government officials, and it was identified that that uh, Lakeshore Road should be established as a tourist route from, from uh, the Blue Water Bridge to Grand Bend to uh, take the uh, heavy traffic up through the, the, uh, the area there, and there was going to be heavy residential in there in the future, and they, they wanted to get ahead of the thing and make sure they had a good road in there. And I think if you go back to the archives, and you can read about that, and it's documented there. And um, there was also... Uh, Several uh, uh, provincial government, uh, when the sewers come in, the provincial government made a, a pretty healthy uh, 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 donation out there to us, a $24 million project. And uh, at the time, they built it like 50% higher because they recognized that the, it was going to be a service or a, a development area group, and we needed that to meet the future needs. And uh, I don't know, uh, you talk about your agriculture, I don't know of any government that's come and give us money to put sewers in an agriculture area. So I, I think that just strengthens what's been happening out there. And the Plimpton Wyoming Council, they took it upon themselves. They, they felt that we were, uh, that was future growth out there. And uh, we didn't allow severances in the agriculture area. And that, for 30 years ago, we cut off severances out there. And we directed people to go to the Lakeshore area where the development should be into Wyoming. And... Uh, we supported a uh, hundred acre minimum lot size and, and the fragmentation of farmland and uh, passed an industrial, no industrial park so our neighbors could uh, do that. We protected farmland out there, but I think what's got to happen here that the things change a little bit and you've got to give up someplace. Even the, the wind turbines people, you know, as brilliant as they are, they didn't build a wind turbine in there because they knew that was or, uh, residential areas and they won't build in residential areas so I, I think um, I think that everything we've done out there we spent several thousands of dollars and even to protect agriculture in that protected agriculture zone we got subdivisions out there and it right reads right in the, the deed that the farmers have the right to farm so the designation as it was was uh, was a holding zone it was uh, restricted agriculture and I think that gave us the protection that we needed out there um, we got to protect. We got a world-class golf course out there. They brought in four major championships. There's a, a, a possibility you could build a barn in behind there, and we've done that in Plimpton, Wyoming. Before we had the Kimlaki Golf Course, right beside it was a, a pig barn, and they don't like it. The ladies in pink when they come out there to play golf and smell that little bit of pig. So it, it's not compatible. All I'm saying is, everything was built there for protection of everything. And I lost my thought. Uh, and then, you know, we supported everything to, to support housing out there. Like, we supported the hospitals. We supported Lambton College. And, uh, we, we, you know, we had, I think it was SLEP, if I could be wrong here, made movies and took them to Toronto and say, hey, come build here. we got residential property out there. Now today you're throwing up a roadblock. It just don't uh, make sense to me. And six times we went to the OMB. The only time we won was the first time we went to the OMB, the county come with us on a subdivision out there, and the people out there took us to, to uh, task on that, and the planner of the day was Mr. Malcolm Boyd. I remember how annoyed I was sitting at a meeting when a 90-year-old man and two of his little old ladies went out and done a hand count of all the lots that was available out in Plimpton, Wyoming. They spent days doing that. Come to a meeting, Mr. Boyd says, oh, the province don't, that, uh, uh, inventory of lots don't mean nothing, he says, and he says the same with those uh, justification studies. We just made a guy pay $15,000 for it. That don't mean nothing. This has all, all been dedicated before as, as, a, as residential lots, and, and I think he was right, and we won that hearing. The people out there lost that hearing, and that was the first time that the, the uh, county come on, was on side, and they understood back then how that land was designated, and it's 
should be the same today. And uh, what the, uh, that was five times. Now today we're standing here. Staff has come out with this report, and they're asking you to go to the OMB with the same old report, and that thing is word for word because we just had a public meeting and it was presented there, and it's the same report they used since day one, and all five of them. And uh, it, it, it just uh, don't make sense. And uh, I, I think this here, if you support this thing, I believe that it, this would go against all the hard work of Lampton County. We, uh, we, we done, and we're just seeing the fruits of that. We're, we exceeded the stats there. We were uh, outnumbered uh, the growth we were supposed to get. We retained 16 years old in our community. We're asking how we keep the young people there. They're coming there because that is where you should be living because you can send your kids to four-year nursing school in Sarnia. It's desirable living. And, uh, and also, we're, we're what, one of the three that's getting our funding restored from the government. So the government's telling us we're doing the right thing. And yet, our planners said, no, no, this is all wrong. And uh, so I'd really be remiss if I didn't uh, say how disappointed I was that uh, this federation would take, take another one of the members to the OMB. I'm not sure if this has ever been done before. I, I just think it's a win-win situation for us all out there. I know I'm not a planner, but I think I, I'm a common sense person. I look at Sarnia, Sarnia's come out very ad, uh, against us. They said you didn't put any uh, commercial zone in there. Why would we put commercial zone? You got a lovely plaza down there that reached its potential and we can support that. You got forced on the other end with this housing, we can support that. They're community of interest. We don't want to put up a plaza out there and have it sitting half empty. We've got enough of them sitting around the county. So I just think it's, uh, it's just a, a win-win situation for everything. The, we get, uh, you all share in the, uh, the uh, added uh, taxes we get coming in. I, think it's, I thought it was 80%, but John tells me it's only 40. But that kept all your taxes down. So we are helping you out. So I, I just don't understand. And so today, um, I urge you all to, uh, to vote against this motion. And I'd like to see you endorse the application with the same enthusiasm as you did for the NOVA announcement, as I believe we all benefit. And uh, I will be asking for a recorded vote on this. And be also, if I'm successful, I'd like to put a motion forth that we accept this thing and move on with it and uh, make Lampton County great again. Thank you. Okay, we'll, we'll pull out um, item 13. Yeah, I, I want to, item 13 uh, is uh, the county opposed, approve, oppose approval of the official plan amendment 41 and official plan amendment number 43 to the town of Plimpton, Wyoming plan and that it seek party status in the appeal proceedings related to these applications. What we're saying is we want to be able to be part of the discussions through the appeal process. Am I correct? That's, so we're asking, uh, we're dealing with that, just that motion? Hmm? Is there a seconder for that motion? Councillor Broad. Councillor Knapper. That last statement, you just confused me. This motion is to take it to the Ontario Municipal Board. Am I correct? This is... Uh, Stefan? Yes. Through you, Mr. Warden. Uh, the motion at hand uh, uh, from Committee AM number 13 dealt with uh, official plan amendments number 41 and number 43 to have the county be represented uh, uh, as a party at the OMB for the two amendments that, uh, one which was uh, Plumpton, Wyoming opposed, and one which was uh, postponed. So that was, that was the 41 and the 43. The next, number 14, is, is the um, motion that dealt with uh, OPA number 42, which was, uh, uh, requesting that Lampton County Council deny uh, the motion that was put forward by 
uh, Plimpton, Wyoming to, to uh, support OPA Amendment 42. Um, I'll have to get the locations of those from the planning staff here. O OPA 42 was, was the application on Queen Street. So if I'm understanding this, 41 and 30, 43 are being appealed by Plimpton, Wyoming? No. Who's, who's going to the OMB? Um, maybe I'll, I'll get uh, Ben to clarify this uh, one more time, our manager of We're, planning. The motion on the floor is dealing with item 13 right now, which is official plan amendments number 41 and 43. Can we uh, get clarification? The committee has uh, opposed approval of the official plan and wants to seek party status and be able to speak at the OMB, but it does not limit us from having communications prior to OMB to negotiate out of that. So, uh, Ben, please. Uh, so OPA 41 um, was appealed by the applicant uh, for lack of a decision by Plimpton, Wyoming's council, and OPA 43 was refused, and that was also appealed. Uh, so the recommendation from uh, our department is to seek party status at these two OMB hearings um, and negotiations would certainly take place, Mr. Warden, through that process. Okay. So I'm not sure that this is the one that you want us to defeat, is it? All I want you to do is approve all three motions and let's get on with it. Because I believe today that they would support that. The one at Town the Line, uh, we did turn that one down, yeah, because of infrastructure. The other two, I, I forget the numbers right offhand. So, well, I would like to see them approved. I'm not clear what we're. I would ask our planner to just give us, fill us in on the context of 41, 42, and 43 and how they, so that everyone here understands uh, what the application, who's appealed them, what is going to the OMB, and what isn't, and the motion was that we be able to speak at party status. So I w could you uh, clarify, please? Sure, Mr. Warden. Uh, so all three applications were filed at the same time. Uh, by the applicants' companies. Uh, there were public meetings held at the end of last year. Um, so, and there was three separate public meetings on these three applications. Uh, the first application, um, OPA 41, uh, that one, no decision was rendered by Plimpton, Wyoming's council. So decision was deferred. Uh, there were some concerns from the St. Clair River Conservation Authority uh, regarding um, drainage and flooding matters that weren't resolved. So council um, in Plimpton, Wyoming did defer a decision. Within uh, 180 days of an application that's submitted, uh, the applicant does have a right to appeal a lack of a decision, and that's what happened in that particular instance. Um, OPA 43, which is the OPA along Townsend Line, that official plan amendment was refused by Plimpton, Wyoming's council, um, and, and that uh, decision to refuse was appealed by the applicant. So that neither of those two applications, 41 or 43, Mr. Warden, made it to uh, the county. Now, OPA 42 uh, is the OPA along Queen Street. Uh, that particular official plan amendment was adopted by Plumpton, Wyoming's council and submitted to the county for consideration of approval. Um, shortly after um, that transpired, the applicant actually uh, launched a preemptive appeal to the OMB um, for the county not making a decision. Um, county, of course, has 180 days to do that, um, and the appeal was received within about two weeks of us receiving that file. Um, so we had forwarded everything to the OMB and advised them that we would be proceeding um, in the normal course and processing the amendment uh, because from our perspective, um, the statutory period within which the county has to make a decision had not lapsed. Um, as the manager of planning, I was unable to uh, approve the amendment uh, for the reasons outlined in the staff report and hence um, we're recommending that uh, county council refuse OPA uh, 42. Uh, the only way for the county to be involved in OPA 41 and 43, because those were appealed locally, uh, would be to seek party status at the OMB. Thank you.
Okay. Councilor Buzowitz. Thank you, Mr. Warden. It feels that I'm swimming in muddied water here. And uh, one question I have for you is this three OP, uh, OPAs uh, issues, are they contradicting the request from the previous speaker we have, we have had to, to meet with BPS Ventures, JN Ventures, and the town of Wyoming? Is that contradicting that? So, so, uh, so, so that is in contradiction. I, 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 I see the value in, uh, in uh, granting that request that council uh, direct staff to meet with representative. So, if that's contradicting, uh, I will vote against the motion. Who has the explanation, Councilor Marriott? Gordon Weber, could you maybe? Just clarify what the motion is. That might settle a lot of, of this back and forth, like uh, whether the motion on the floor is supporting the committee's uh, motion or not, and then maybe call the vote. I, I believe the motion that Councillor Knapper made is opposing the decision of the committee. Is that correct? The motion from Councillor Knapper and seconded by Councillor Broad is opposing the decision that was made by the committee. Am I correct in that? Yeah. That, that's correct. Perhaps Ben can explain what the consequences of, um, of opposing those two motions would be. Please clarify. Uh, certainly, Mr. Warden. So uh, if the county does not seek party status uh, with OPA 41 and 43 uh, before the OMB, um, will not have any kind of um, say as to the outcome um, at those proceedings. So the hearings would proceed regardless unless some sort of a settlement is reached between Plumpton, Wyoming and the applicant. This motion gives us the opportunity to be part of the OMB discussions, uh, whether they're prior to the, to the uh, proceedings. Uh. Any other questions? Councillor Bradley? Well, if I was understanding Mayor Knapper's motion, it was just asking people not to support this on a recorded vote. So the motion stands unless a majority are opposed to this. And that's the simplest way of doing this. The other point I want to make is that having witnessed so many of these OMB hearings, you're in the room, you're part of the discussions, there might be a negotiated settlement, and we have someone in the room who will come back and tell us what that outcome is. That was that was the feeling of the committee when the yes. committee made this motion that we are being part of the discussions uh, and negotiating throughout them. So I'm going to call the question on the vote on the motion if everybody's clear on it. The motion is that we do not support the committee recommendation. The vote that's there. So a, a yes vote turns down what the committee did. A no vote confirms what the committee's action was. Is that clear? Am I correct? Sorry. So a yes vote turns down the committee. A no vote supports the, the committee's decision. And we've been asked for a recorded vote on this. So, Councillor Han. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to clarify because I'm, I'm confused. So if you support the committee, you support the request to be p for party status? Yes. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I okay. will be. I just, it's been going all over the place, so yeah. thank you. To support what the committee does, vote no. Councilor Ruzowicz. I think that in every council head, there is a need for clarity. It was a long meeting. I, would that be in order to, to actually table that till the next council meeting? If there's a seconder, if that's a motion to table, there has to be a seconder, and then there can be no discussion. There is. Councillor McGugan. 
Council, is it going to the OMB? Am I mixed up here? Like, are we going there or, or why or what the deal? Ben? Leading to an OMB hearing unless there's a settlement reached. OPA 42, um, county has not issued a decision, but we are recommending um, a denial of that official plan amendment and the applicant would have appeal rights if county does refuse it. On those, on those two applications, or 41 and, and 43. So a vote no here gives us the opportunity to be party to that and to contribute to that process. I'm going to call, ask the clerk to call the roll on um, a recorded vote. So. Okay. All right, we all start with Councillor Hand. No. Councillor McDougall? No. Councillor Marriott? Yes. Councillor McCharles? Yes. Councillor McGugan? Yes. Councillor Knapper? Councillor Veen? Yes. Warden Weaver? No. Councillor Bushi? No. Councillor Bradley? No. Councillor Broad? Yes. Councillor Bruzewitz? No. Councillor Case? Yes. Councillor Cook? No. Councillor Gilliland? Yes. And Councillor Gillis? Motion is defeated. The committee's decision stands, is what that uh, motion. Uh, item number 14, this is official plan amendment number 42 in Plimpton, Wyoming. And this was a motion that, any questions regarding that? Item 15, central emergency reporting. Yes. You skipped over 14 pretty quick. Uh, I looked at you. I didn't see your hand. Well, Item 14 is the official plan amendment regarding, and the committee has said that it be refused given that it is not consistent with provincial policy statement. That's the one on Queen Street, correct? Where's the, these it's numbers? one on Queen Street. Yeah, well, I'd like to do the same thing as I done last time there. Okay. Because Queen Street is... It's already being developed. Uh, I just don't know, see why you turned that one down. It's, my God. So your motion would be that we defeat the decision of the committee. Is that a clear? Yeah. And, and a, that would mean that we approve the amendment? A yes vote to the motion would be that we would approve the amendment. Is there a seconder for... Councillor Veen? Okay. Any questions for this one? Councillor McDougall? Warden Weaver, could you, um, uh, could you confirm for our tired meeting group here that, again, it's similar to the other one, that a no vote would support the committee decision and a yes vote would support the other point of view? Could you... Confirm that, please, for us. A, a vote in favor of the motion would defeat the committee's recommendation. <clears throat> Any other questions before I call the vote? I would ask the clerk. <clears throat> Councillor Broad? Yes. Councillor Bruzewitz? Councillor Case? Yes. Councillor Cook? No. Councillor Gilliland? Yes. Councillor Gillis? No. Councillor Hand? No. Councillor McDougall? No. Councillor Marriott? Yes. Councillor McCharles? Yes. Councillor McGugan? Yes. Councillor Knapper? Yes. Councillor Veen? Yes. Warden Weaver? No. Councillor Bushi? No. Councillor Bradley? No. So
So the decision of the committee stands? The decision of the committee stands. Item 15, Central Emergency Reporting. Item 16, Meeting with First Nations. Public Health. Item 17, Correspondence. Item 18, Information Reports. Item 19, Public Access Defibrillators. Item 20, Cultural uh, Services uh, Annual Report. Item 21, Amendments to 2018 Fees and Services. Item 22, Sarnia Historical Society. Items 23, 24, and 25 are in camera. And adjournment. Uh, Councillor Marriott. I move the adoption of the minutes. Seconded by Councillor Cook. Any questions? All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. And we go to um, PM committee minutes. Uh, I would call on Chair Hand to present these minutes. Warden Weber and council members, um, I present the minutes of the afternoon committee me meeting. Okay. Item one, nomination for chair. Item two, Peter Gilliland, vice chair. Item three, I think that Councillor Knapper got appointed to the Accessibility Committee, not the Agricultural Advisory Committee. So we'll make that uh, friendly amendment. Long-term care, item four, correspondence. Item five, information reports. Finance facilities, item six, correspondence. Item seven, year-end report on reserves. Social services, item eight, regarding family counseling. Item nine, information reports. Item 10, regarding circles donations. Item 11, regarding domiciliary hostel standards. Item 12, regarding home for good. Item 13, regarding home for good. Item 14, regarding social infrastructure fund. Item 15, 16, and 17 are in camera. Item 18 is it items. Actually, we have two items, 17, so 17 becomes an 18. Adjournment. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Councillor Han? So I move for the adoption of these minutes. Seconded. Councillor Gilliland? All in favor of that? That's carried. Thank you. Items tabled from a previous meeting. I don't believe we have any. Notices of motion. Notices of bylaws. Oh, Councillor Gilliland? Speak to number other business. Yes. Um, I know the hour is late, but I'm compelled to bring this up because the one single question I get most out of the community, out of, in my writing or area, is where are we on our Internet? And I'm wondering if we shouldn't have a follow-up from our representative Swifts to tell us what milestone or what, where are we at this point in time? Because I cannot tell people that it's destined to last to 2040. I need, I need more, better information. Okay. So I, I'm requesting that a representative from the SWIFT come and speak to us about the milestones. Thank we you. Get a, we can get an update. We'll make sure we get something coming back to us. Okay. Thank you. Any other business? Bylaws. Oh, Councilor McGugan. 
Thank you, Mr. Warden. I realize the time is late, but uh, uh, Councillor Gilliland did bring up what I was going to bring up in new business, because I, I went to Rome and I talked to many people about there, and some of them are deeply involved in this whole SWIFT program. And to me, it's very cloudy and very foggy, and I think it's an excellent idea. We need somebody to come, because the 2040 was mentioned to me at Roma, so I think we're in turmoil. Okay. Anything else before I go on to the bylaws again? <laughs> I don't want to miss anything. Bylaws. Thank you, Warden. It is moved by Councillor Marriott and seconded by Deputy Warden McCharles that bylaws 1 to 7 inclusive as circulated be taken as read a first and second time. All in favor? Carried. Thank you, Warden. It is moved by Deputy Warden McCharles and seconded by Councillor Marriott that bylaws 1 to 7 inclusive of 2008 as circulated be taken as read a third and, final, and finally passed. All in favor? That's carried. Thank you. And motion to adjourn. Council, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <Pick two. laughs>